Hello, everybody, and Merry Christmas to all of you. A great day to have you all together. And please invite your friends. Not many people yet uh, online, but I hope soon they will be with us. Uh, this video is just to speak about the fear which Islam have from Christianity. You know, um, the only way for a cult to stay exist is by eliminating any competition. Imagine you go to a restaurant and there's an order from the governor that you can eat only one kind of meal. The menu have only one dish. And the menu says what you should say even before the meal and after the meal and during the meal. And the menu says what you should eat, what you should not eat, what you can do, what you cannot do. And then the Muslim, they say to us that Islam bring a choice. To believe in a cult like Islam, that Islam bring a choice, you should first give a choice. I never heard of a cult speak of choices as much as Islam, but yet in Islam there's no choices. You cannot even choose what you want to be or what you don't want to be. It's one way to hell. First of all, I want to apologize from all those who send me Merry Christmas in Facebook or in Skype. It's impossible to answer all of you. I got thousands and thousands of them, and you know that this is really impossible. But I love you all, and Merry Christmas, all of you. If we go in YouTube, we will find the following. Tons of thousands of videos made by Muslims warning the Muslims not to celebrate Christmas. What is the problem? Is that because a Christmas is a pagan practice, as they claim? What about Valentine? Muslims, they fear Valentine to death. Is Valentine is a day of paganism? What about Easter? What about, what about, what about? What about a new year? What about? Everything in Islam is a phobia. The Muslim have phobia even from a poor pig. If a Muslim, he see a pig, he go panic. They have a phobia even from a dog. To the point their prophet, he ordered to kill all the dogs. How to respond to Merry Christmas episode? Hmm. They are teaching the Muslims even how to respond to Merry Christmas. You cannot say back Merry Christmas. How you respond to that? Somebody says to you, Merry Christmas, how we can get away with this? I mean, look at the silly cult of Islam, how bad they are terrified. Somebody, okay, you are not celebrating Christmas, but somebody says to you, Merry Christmas, what do you say to him? <laughs> the name of a Christ is terrifying them and the funny by the way the Muslims they say to you we respect Jesus do you remember the guy who called me from Pakistan and he said that he is a friend of Zakir Naik and he wanted to show me that Jesus is a bastard as he claimed do you remember do you remember if the Muslims they respect Jesus why there's tons of thousands of videos made to prove that Jesus is a son of an illegal relationship and he is a bastard. They say to you, we love Jesus. The Quran say we believe in the birth of, G of Jesus to be from a Virgin Mary, but the Muslims, they swarm the internet insulting Jesus. The same as Muhammad, he says he loved Jesus. 
but Muhammad he said he is going to have sex with the mother of Jesus Christmas is an insult to Islam but having sex with the mother of Jesus is not an insult to Islam Islam suffer from mental illness anything is not Islamic is dangerous but the funny Islam nothing of it is Islamic as an example if you ask a Muslim and by the way my Skype is open any Muslim can call me only Muslims please because always you know we are not like the same the Muslims they do the Muslim they have like a, a show or a program and only Muslims, you know, that they don't allow anyone to call because simply they are scared from facing a debate, a real debate, real questions. Why you don't accept Christmas? Because Christmas, he was celebrated by the 25th uh, in December. It was the Sunday. Okay, hold on, hold on. The Orthodox Christians don't celebrate that day. Do you accept that day? Oh, no, we don't still wouldn't accept it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Guys, do you know what I mean? Okay, what about the Orthodox Christian? Because they have different calendar. And actually, I believe that the Orthodox calendar, their calendar is the calendar we should follow. And the reason I believe in that, because the Easter day, our Easter day, always approving or approve that the Orthodox calendar is the correct one. Because the light comes from the empty tomb of Jesus. You know what I mean? So do the Muslims accept that Christmas at that day? No. Still Christmas is haram. So they try to find any excuse. Okay, if Jesus is a prophet of God for you, and somebody celebrating a prophet of God for you, what's your problem? Let us say in that day, people they used to worship rocks, stones, volleyball, they used to worship Michael Jackson, maybe. They used to worship uh, potato, tomato, and then they switched to worship a true God. What's the problem? They say to you the date, but just to show you how stupid that is, because the date of your prophet might come next year or two years from now in December 25th. So what you will do then? The stupid calendar of Islam is like this. The Muslims this year, they celebrate the birth of their prophet in November. Which means just last month, about two months ago. Muhammad was born in April 22nd, according to Muslim history. And because the Muslims, they change the calendar of the Arab, they keep the names, but they switch the date, which means the month is now they are moving around the year. The Arab, they used to correct their calendar because it's a lunar calendar. The Muslim did not follow the correction because they are savage who do not know how to do that. And I'm talking here about the Arab who do, do immigration, the Sahariq. The Sahariq who they are have no education and they do not know what to do. So they decide to keep it as it is. But not as it says, as the Arab used to do, as it is from the day of Muhammad immigration. So look what happened. In the year 2018, the birth of Muhammad will be the following, which is we celebrate two months ago. Do you see it? It was Sunday. It was Ahad Sunday. Equal to 1439. Okay, let us switch from Hijri to uh, Georgian. Convert. That will be December 25th. If it was 16, so we will make it here 22. <laughs> I will make it 22 because this is the actual birth of Muhammad supposedly it is December 31st mm. 
I will check again. This is Rabi al Awwal, Rabi al Thani. Uh huh. Okay. You see, I just to show you the date of Muhammad's birth. When Muhammad was born? April 22nd. April 22nd in the year 571. In the year 571. That is equal. Let me show you that. Uh, Rabia al Awal. Yeah. That equal to the 12th of Rabia al Awal. So let's go to the 12th. Rabia al Awal. And we will go starting from 2018. Oh, sorry. Um, let us convert Georgian. Okay, no, uh, do this. Uh, this one is not helping me really. Let us go here. Let us do this. Okay. So in the year one one thousand four hundred forty, Rabi al Rabi al Awal is November twenty first. What if we change it to one forty one? November ten. What if we change it to no to 142? 144. Let us add a few years. October 8. What if we make it 448? Change in the year. That make it August 26. Do you see the date the date of Muhammad's birth? Let us go and make it 46 or 45. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have to do it again. October sixteen. October five. What if we make it in the year four hundred or five hundred? March 8. What if we make it 505? Oh, you cannot do that. Okay, did not accept to go that far. So let us go back on time. What if we say in the year, in the year uh, uh, 700? This is 700 according to Islamic calendar. Muhammad was born December 25th. By the way, honest to God, it was a coincidence. I never thought that this would be the date. Did you see what happened? Guys, did you see what happened? Honest to God, I did not even thought about it. That is going to be December 20. I'm just guessing. Guess what? In the year 1300 Christian calendar, Muhammad was born December 25th. Oh, it's Rabi al Awal, not Rabi. Here it says Rabi al Thani. Oh, Rabi al Awal. Okay, Rabi al Awal. Okay. But you know, assume, assume it was uh, December 25th. That will not change anything. Because if we keep changing, it's going to come sooner or later in December 25th. As you see, the calendar keep moving. <laughs> right? Let us see, 700. Hello?
Hello. Hello, Christian Prince. Yes. Hey, um, I was just watching your live. I just wanted to say Merry Christmas and thank you for your videos. I really love them. I appreciate them. And I was wondering, do you ever debate in Arabic? Oh, yeah. You do? Okay. It would be interesting to see some of your Arabic debates if you ever... Um, oh, you don't want to see them in Arabic. You don't want to see them in Arabic. In Arabic, Muslims, they go dancing crazy. They lose their mind. You can actually watch. There is one very well known. Uh, my debate with the head of the Islamic uh, Shia in USA. His name Sheikh uh, Hisham al Husseini. Okay. In, in ABN TV, you can search for it, and you will see how the crazy guy lost his mind. Okay, I, I will search that. Yeah, Thank this guy he was interviewed by Fox News more than five to six times. He was in, in, uh, he was hired by as a consultant for George Bush, the idiot. And uh, uh, each time the Fox News they try to corner him about his belief, he get away because he's Shia. He play games, but with me he could not. So I don't know if you speak Arabic, you can enjoy it. And you will see, you will see the comment of the Muslim down there. They accuse me that I am I paid him to make Islam look stupid. Uh, hmm. Okay, could you give once again the reference to that uh, link? Uh, maybe not now. Maybe later I can. You know, maybe somebody can in the text in the chat can find it for you. Okay. Right. okay thank you so much take care take care bye yeah because remember christian prince when he speak english he is speaking the limited english he have christian prince he speak arabic this is his native language so the horse is full power you know what i mean you see you will notice that sometimes I have a limitation and the limitation is a clear because my language does not help me much sometimes I want to express myself in certain way but I have limited words to use you see I don't speak a fluent English like uh, uh, maybe all of you maybe so because of that then I found myself very limited but in Arabic I am a different in different level because English you know is not a problem for me no more this is my native language and then you will see a different person right anyway so the point here we are trying to say that Muhammad birthday sometime is in December sometime in, in January sometime in February sometime in like October uh, guys, I want just Muslims to call me, please. I don't want to take, you know, I took this uh, uh, lady call. I thought she is a Muslim. Only, only Muslims call me now. Please, please. Let us hear the other side of the story. All right? I don't want to receive calls. People saying to me, Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. I'm happy that you are celebrating the Christmas. We got it. We are here to teach, not just to say, Merry Christmas. So as you see, the the Islamic calendar is very funny and very stupid. Sometime Ramadan itself is in G December, sometime it's in January, sometime is in July, sometime it's in August, sometime it's in November, sometime it's in October, same as the birth of Muhammad. So Muslims when they when they celebrate, how in the world do you celebrate that? They say to you, Well, Islamic calendar is not correct. So why in the world your God Allah he chose such a funny calendar to the point the 22nd of April became November or December or January your prophet was born in the 22nd of April now the Muslim they say to us we refuse a Christmas because it have a pagan roots look who is talking look who is talking isn't it you Muslims who are following everything in your religion based on pagan roots what is the Kaaba what is the black stone why Muhammad kissed the black stone isn't it the Arab before Muhammad they used to kiss the black stone? Isn't it the Arab before Muhammad they used to touch their vagina and put their hands full of blood inside the black stone because they believe that this is the stone of fertility and this is the stone present the God of fertility? What is Manat? What is As-Safa? What is 
what well, everything in Islam all the ritual Islamic ritual is pagan nothing in Islam is not pagan even Muhammad he told the Abdul that if you touch black stones They will erase your sin how that can happen hmm? how touching stones you see you are against Christmas because you say there is a there, they used to worship in that date before the Sun well we don't worship the Sun and you know that and don't be hypocrite but you still worship in idols you kiss stones, you believe that the stone forgive your sin. And let us show you what your prophet said. Sometime. This website. <laughs> Here we go. Isn't it your prophet saying this? Abu Abdul Rahman, somebody said to Abu Abdul Rahman, why do I only see you touching those two two corners? The two corners is what? There's a stones there, the Yemeni corner and the black stone. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah says, touching them erase sins. Do you see the Christians going around and touching a Christmas tree and says this Christmas tree erase our sin? Do you see Christian says in the day of 25th the sun will erase our sin? As long you are against paganism, how you dare to speak about paganism when we are the last one to be called pagan? When everything in your religion is based on stones, you pray in the direction of a stone, you go around the stone, you 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 bow down in the front of a stone and you touch a stone and you believe that the stone forgive your sin. What is left? Any Muslim can tell me what is left. How in the world, if I touch stones, that my sin will be erased. Let me call Zach and Nick, and maybe he can give us an answer. Tiridin, 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 tiridin. Doctor Zach and Nick, I told you one million times don't call me at the middle of the night, and I know exactly what you are going to talk about. Zach and Nick, how you want to know what I'm talking about? I was listening to you. How you said you are. Okay, uh, you sound like you were asleep. I listen to you even when I'm sleeping. I put all what in your channel and I know exactly what the question. Okay, as long as you know what is the question, what is the question? You are going to ask me why somebody broke the teeth of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, uh, no. Okay, you are going to ask me why the Prophet was full of life. Uh, not that one too. Okay, you are going to ask me uh, why the Prophet, he had sex with the child, his name is the, 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 uh, No. Okay, I give up. What is the question? Mm -hmm. Okay. The question is why Muhammad said that if you touch the two corners which have the, the black stone and the Yemeni corner which have the Yemeni stones, that will erase your sin. What is the explanation? First of all, in Islam, only Allah forgives the sin. Let us make it clear. But because the Prophet said in different hadith that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. Uh -huh. The black stone is the right hand of Allah. So Allah have a hand from a stone. This is because you are stupid, you cannot understand. Let me explain to you. The black stone is the right hand of Allah, which means it is in earth presenting the hand of Allah. So that the second you kiss it, you are kissing the hand of Allah. Thank you very much. Don't call me again. I will call the police for you. The black st stone is the right hand of Allah. 
any Muslim? Hmm? So when we kiss the black stone, we are kissing the hand of Allah. And you are talking about paganism. If there is any Muslim would like to call us. Anyone? I will take you to an Islamic website so we can read together how the Muslims explain this funny pagan black stone. You see, once I called an Islamic, uh, they, they have not, I called, I, I chatted with them actually. They have a website called like Convert to Islam something. They have a chat. It's like uh, you open the website in the corner, they like ask me. So I asked the person there, why? Uh, I said, the brother, I have a question. Uh, why uh, the prophet he kissed the black stone he said because it's holy i said and why it's holy the guy in the other side took him like five minutes and he answered saying because the prophet kisses <laughs> unbelievable <clears throat> i read article about the black stone and i wanted to be sure about the soundness of the hadiths and report whether they can be accepted or they are fabricated, Maudua. May Allah reward you with good reward. Hmm. The article says, Yes, there is only one stone on earth that float in water. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. Mm. Any Muslim have a comment, brother? Any Muslim have a comment? The black stone float in water, my friend. First of all, there is many kind of stones. They float in water. They are in the shape of a stone, and they are a stone, but they float. Yes, because they have a very light weight. They are different. The the the, the way is made from. They are like uh, nothing, like wood. So it's very funny and very silly. Secondly, the black stone is the only stone afloat in water. Did you make it to swim one day? I hope it's a Muslim. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Uh, hello. Yes, my friend. I'm here. Good evening, CP. Good evening, my friend. Uh, my name is Austin. I'm calling from Nigeria. All right. How is Nigeria doing? Hello, can you hear me? I hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, Nigeria is fine. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just laughing when we were making uh, Zakarna. So I hope we can get him on stage one of these days. I don't know how the contact will be made. He said that he calls you or maybe you call him. Let's see how, how the debate goes about uh, Islam. All right, my friend. Well, he will never call me and it will never happen. Keep dreaming. Anyway, my friend, I cannot really keep you for long with me because we want to continue the topic and we want only Muslim to call. All right? I apologize. All right. Okay, thank you very much for calling. Right, thank you. Take care. Yeah, guys, don't call me unless you are a Muslim, please. Don't call me unless you are a Muslim. So the Muslims, obviously, they are trying to make the stone as a magical stone. Now, if the stone float in water or not, is that a reason to kiss it? I have a duck. She float in water. Shall we kiss it? Hmm? We have two signs in our stones. It float in water and it does not get hot on fire. I'm really, I, that's it. I'm going to convert to Islam. Now we have a sign. You see, the Muslim, they have Jesus who walk in water. They have Jesus who resurrect people from death. They have Jesus who can make the blind see. 
they have Jesus who can make the one who cannot walk walk by saying to him just carry your bed and walk but they don't want to celebrate the birth of Jesus but they want to kiss a stone stone because a stone does not get hot by fire and this is by, by the way all of this is fabrication I mean where you get this from like did you put it in fire did you make a barbecue in it when the last time you Muslim you did barbecue with the black stone hmm? how you know that the black stone will not get hot with fire brother unless you did the barbecue with it let us continue so he brought the stone and had been wrapped with the perfume warped in brocade to make him think that this is was a black stone what what Abdullah ibn al-Aqim came and said, we have two signs of our stone. It's a float in water and does not get hot fire. So he brought a stone, had been wrapped with perfume and warp in brocade to make him think that this is, was the black stone. Somebody tried to deceive them and say, this is the black stone. They place it in water and it sank. Ah, la, 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 la. This is cannot be our stone. Our, our stone knows how to swim. I mean, let us face it here. This is cannot be the black stone. And then they put the fire in it and cracked. Man. Then he brought another stone and he did likewise. And the same thing happened. He brought the black stone and put it in water. And it's a flood. Let us continue, man. The black stone is the point which tawaf began. Tawaf, which means you go around the Kaaba. Okay, so Islam start with worshiping ritual by the black stone. Point. At as the southeastern corner of the holy Kaaba. Why the Kaaba is holy? Hmm. We will see that later. It was originally one of the priceless stones of paradise. If 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 if. I mean, you know, you know how Allah is a cheap is Allah. He sent us one stone from paradise. What Allah will do is if he send us another stone to put it in any casino in Las Vegas. That will make all the Muslims go to all casinos and they will kiss them and they will spend their money. One one stone only. And I have a surprise for the Muslims. What is the black stone? There's no black stone, you idiot. There's no black stone. You see, the Muslims has no Quran, there has no black stone, there's nothing left of it. There is a small eight tiny pieces. Let me show you. There's no black stone. Small tiny pieces. And they are not from one stone. You can tell from the color. Let's go to images. I'll try to find you an image. Here we go. Let us see if we can find something bigger. All right. Let us zoom in. Do you see, guys, what the black stone today is? There's nothing left of this black stone. There is a small eight pieces. I don't know if you can see them. Let me let me put an arrow on the stones. The rest is an ox. Sorry, it's a, it's a wax. The rest is wax. It is not the stone. You see this this uh, this color here. This is not a stone. The stone is here. Do you see it? Small, tiny, eight pieces. And here we have a problem. Exactly eight pieces. What is the problem? Anyone notice? If Allah He send you a stone and the stone was one piece, and this stone is holy, it is miraculous, and you Muslims are not pagan. Why Allah did not preserve the stone?
What happened to the stone? You can go to YouTube and search for black stone maintenance. You will see them how they every every few weeks they have to repair the walks around the stones. And the wax is made from a mix of wax and perfume and etc. Supposedly it will make the black stone not to stink because tons of thousands of people kiss it and lick it. <sighs> mm, yummy. So when you say to me we have a black stone and the black stone is holy, obviously the holy God of Islam could not protect his stone. Not only that, if we go right now and search in YouTube about the destruction of the Kaaba, and the kidnap of the black stone, you will find that Hassan al Qurmuti, who is a Shia sect, he destroyed the Kaaba and he screamed in the middle of the Kaaba, saying, Allah, <laughs> Allah, where is your birds? Huh? Because why he's saying that? Because there is a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of the elephant. Why it's called the chapter of the elephant? Because supposedly there is an elephant army came to destroy the Kaaba. And Allah, he sent birds, like F-16 birds. And they throw rocks at the army. The chapter of the feel, feel in Arabic, actually, this is not even an Arabic word. Uh, yet the Quran says, uh, Quran is an Arabic, uh, pure Arabic. Didn't you hear about the elephant? Okay, what happened, the elephant? Did you see what Allah did to the campaign of the elephant? Okay, what happened? Allah, He sent birds, flight of birds. <laughs> F-16 and they throw rocks from made from packed clay. I mean, look at those rocks. They have a manufacturer of packed clay. You see, they don't use any kind of missiles. It have to be backed clay. Hello? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, brother, we have an army attack. From the birds, we are going to launch jihad with the bird, brother. Can you order a lot of blocks of a clay? We are need to prepare them. Can you bag them for us, brother? Yes, brother. We need like a two thousand uh, 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 block of clay, brother. Need to be clay backed and ready for brother for shooting, brother. So this is the animation of the birds, is made from backed clay. Where is the birds get the backed clay? Clay, they have a manufacturer. Hmm? And how in the world any idiot he want to believe that an army of elephant came to Mecca? In case you do not know, elephant they need an average of 600 gallons of water a day. Not only they cannot survive without water, they cannot to drink, they cannot survive without water even to stay inside the water during the day. This is why if you go and watch any videos, you will see all this kind of animals. They sit inside the water during the daytime. They spend their time in the water. The elephant, he spray water always in his body because he cannot sweat. He will die from the heat. So water is necessity not only to drink, but to keep themselves cool. Otherwise, they will die. So now we have an elephant army coming to the Kaaba. To destroy the Kaaba, and now we have a bird flying, carrying rocks made from packed clay. And then they throw their rocks at the army. So Al Qurmuti, he stood in the middle of the Kaaba while he was destroying the Kaaba. And he did scream, saying, Allah, where is your birds? Where is your fighting birds? Here we go. I am here. And not only that. Al Qurmuti, he did steal the black stone. 
and he took it away and he made it as his personal private part sto stone for centuries sorry i mean like for decade according to muslims 21 years there's videos in youtube made by muslims speaking about what al qurmati did what al qurmati did let me see if i can find you that If you go in YouTube and you search, you will find tons of his stories. All of them, they are funny. And, you know, here as an example, there's a movie made by Muslims about how the birds, they defend the Kaaba, as you see it in the top. Then you will see another video. In this day, 31st October 683, the Kaaba burned down. When the Kaaba and Mecca will be destroyed. This is okay. This is you know, Mahdi destruction, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. This is a sheikh here. He is speaking about how the Kaaba was destroyed and how Al Qurmuti was screaming, saying, Where are your birds, Allah? Where was the birds of Allah when Al Qurmuti destroyed the Kaaba and he took the black stone? And not only that, the Muslims confirm when Al Qurmati took the black stone, it was in different size, in different weight. When the Muslims got it back, the stone was a lot smaller and a lot lighter. The Muslims explain that they say because when he took it, he took it against its will. The will of who? Of the stone. And when the stone came back, it was light because it was happy to be back to the cup. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find. Hadith in Arabic, in English, sorry. Yeah, well, that would be maybe hard to find it in our English. Let us see. Anyway, we, we can try to find it later. Sometimes, some. But the important is obviously, this black stone is nothing but a pagan practice. The same as a Safa and Al Marwa in Islam. When the Muslims they ask Muhammad, why we are practicing as suffer? And the Muslims they rejected in the beginning to practice as Safa and Al Marwa because this is a pure pagan practice. But because Muhammad he is a hypocrite man, he is trying to make the pagan agree with him, he compromise. So we find here. In chapter 2, verse number 158, it says, Behold, Safa and Marwa are among the symbols of Allah. So those who visit the house in the season or at other time should compose them around 
and there is no sin on them okay hold on why the verse saying there is no sin on them what make the Muslims think that there is sin on them to do so this was a response for the Muslims believing in the beginning of Islam because Muhammad trying to fool them in the beginning saying he is against paganism so they believe that this is sin why wouldn't I do the Safa al-Marwa? A Safa al-Marwa is a pagan practice. Muhammad, he wanted to make the pagan accept him. It doesn't matter what the price is. He said, no, no, do the Safa al-Marwa. Because there's some tribe of the Arab, they don't accept. They put the conditions. If we will be a Muslims, we have to keep a Safa and al-Marwa as a part of our practice. Muhammad, as usual, he compromised. He is a fake man. He's a false prophet. You want to keep going to Las Vegas? No problem. Here we go. We add Las Vegas to the ritual of Allah. If we go to the books of interpretation, we will find that this is the reason. And by the way, I challenge any Muslim to say to me, I am making things up. All right. If we go to Tafsir, And as you see, this is a chapter 2, verse 158, Muslims. All right? Chapter 2, verse 158. We will choose it in the front of your eyes. What make the Muslims believe that this is, should not be done? This is your biggest potato, Ibn Kathir, who always lied defending Islam. But we will use his lies to prove, to prove Islam to be stupid. Verily as a Safa and Al-Marwa, two mountains in Mecca, are the symbols of Allah. Why? I thought the Kaaba is a symbol of Allah. So now we have a Safa and Al-Marwa are the symbol of Allah. So it is not a sin on him who perform Hajj or Umrah in the house of the Kaaba to perform going Tawaf between Safa and Marwa. So what they do in the Safa and Marwa? There's two small, tiny hills, not mountains really, and the Muslims they have to do jogging between them, and this is a practice was done by the pagan Arab before Islam. They used to have two idols. One for a male and one for a female. And those two idols of the, the male and the female, uh, uh, supposedly they had sex inside the Kaaba. Here it says, Allah said, By Allah, it is not a sin if someone did not perform tawaf around them. Aisha said, Worst is which you said on my nephew. If this is meaning of it, it should have read, it is not sin if one did not perform tawaf around them. Rather, the ayah was revealed regarding Ansar. Hold on. So now we try to find the answer. Ansar is a tribe or a group of the Arab who they don't they they do who who they are people who practice the Sasafa Marwa, who before Islam. They used to resume Ihlal or Ihram of for Hajj in the area or uh, 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 Musala and their idol Manat and Al Uzza and to worship. So those Ansar, they used to worship their idols, which is Manat and Al Uzza. Those who assumed Ihlal for Manat used to hesitate to perform Tawaf going between mounts as a Safa al Marwa. So this was a ritual of those who practice al Manat al Uzza gods, and it was practiced by this group of Arab as a ritual, and it's a must ritual for them to practice their their cult, you know, to, to worship idols. al and al Uzza are the are the daughters of Allah. Remember the moon god. So they are during the pre-Islamic era. Ask Allah Messenger about about it saying, Oh Messenger of Allah, 
During the time of Jahiliyyah, we used to hesitate to perform tawaf between as Safa and al Marwa. Allah then revealed, In as Safa wal Marwa min sha'air Allah, faman hajj, faman hajj al Bayta wa Tamara, fala janaha alayhi an yatufu bihima. Verily, as Safa and Marwa are the symbols of Allah. So it is not sin on him who perform Hajj or Imra. Okay, so it's not sin. Is it a blessing? And what the point? Why? What we will earn if we do as Safa and Marwa? If it's not sin, is it good? I mean, what kind of God he says to us? It's not sin to do so, but he did not say to us what the benefit of doing so. And why it is the symbol of Allah? Are we following, guys? How those two things became the symbol of Allah, which is nothing but a pure paganism. Let us continue. In other narration, Imam Az Zuhri reported that Urwa said later, told Abu Bakr, etc., 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 etc. I have not heard such information. However, I heard learned man saying that all the people except those whom Aisha mentioned said our tawaf between those two hills is a practice of a jahiliya. Jahiliya mean paganism. The ignorant, the time of ignorance. So this is our practice from the ignorance time. Why we are practicing it now? Some others among Ansar said we are commanded to perform tawaf of the Kaaba, but not between as Safa and Al Marwa. So what we will do now? Should we do the the Kaaba only, or the Kaaba and Safa and Marwa? Verily, as Safa and Al Marwa is from the symbol of Allah, Abu Bakr, etc. Said, it seemed that this verse was revealed concerning two groups. There's two groups are arguing about which we should do. Al Bukhari collected similar narration by Anas, saying as the following Esaf is an idol, was in As Safa, while Naila was an idol, was on Marwa, and they used to touch or kiss them after. Kiss them. After that, Islam came. They were hesitate about performing tawaf between them. Okay, hold on. So a Safa and Al Marwa is an idol for a male and a female. And the Arab, they used to go and kiss them. They have one idol of an, 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 the female on one hill and the other idol of a male in the other hill. It's like Romeo and Juliet. Six idols. And the Arab, they used to go between them and they kiss them. Now, what made that practice part of the ritual of Islam? Any Muslim? How such a stupid practice? You Muslims who you are so angry from a Christmas, so angry from the cross, so angry from music, so angry from everything. That does not make you angry. And we continue with the paganism of Muhammad. The wisdom behind legislating to go between as Safa and Al-Marwa. What is the wisdom? Let us see the wisdom. Muslim recorded long hadith in Sahih and his in his Sahih from Jabir, which Allah messenger finished the wall between the house and then went back to Rukun, the corner of the black stone and kiss it. I'm a prophet Muhammad, I'm against paganism, a brother, and we should not worship stones. But I like to kiss the black stone, brother, because it's very sexy and I know it. Isn't it? This is a pure paganism. After Muhammad, he kissed the black stone. Muhammad, he says, Inna Safa wal Marwa from the symbol of Allah. 
So look at the connection. We kiss a black stone, and right away we start reciting that as Safa and Al Marwa are from the symbol of Allah. We wish you a happy Safa. We wish you a happy Marwa. We wish you to kiss a stone, all of you Muslim. We should kiss a stone. We should kiss a stone because it's not a pagan and this is halal. We wish you a safa safa. We wish you a happy marwa. We wish you a happy stone. Let us kiss it over the phone. Are you happy now? I hope you are not getting offended. So, the Merry Christmas. Is it driving you crazy and kissing stones, going between stones and making stones the symbol of Allah is not? Hmm? Do we have any Abdul? I never heard of a religion, oh sorry, cult, speak too much of things when they practice the opposite. As an example, the Muslim we say we are against adultery. We are very conservative. We are very conservative, my friend. But the prophet, he said, if your wife is a whore, enjoy her with the rest. Hmm? If your wife is a whore, Okay, it's okay. Enjoy her, brother. Hmm? A man he came to the prophet, and he said to her, he said to him, Prophet, my wife literally is a whore. Anyone he can touch her boobs, he can touch her bum, he can play with her, he can have sex with her. Asking the prophet for what he should do and the prophet guys is very conservative This is Muhammad. Are you kidding me? So look what Muhammad he said It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that a man came to the messenger of Allah and said I have a wife Who is the one of the most beloved of the people to me? I love her. I really, really, really love her. But she does not object anyone to touches her. Hmm? Really? Brother, what is your address, brother? A lot of Abdul, they will be so happy to visit you and they wish you a happy Marwa. We wish you a happy Safwa. We wish you a happy Black Stone. We kiss it alone. Instead of kissing the Black Stone, they will be touching your wife and kissing your wife. And then, Muhammad, he said, okay, well, divorce her. He, the guy, said, I cannot do live without her. Muhammad, he said, <laughs> then stay with her as much as you need to. That's it? Actually, in the hadith, it says, stay with her and enjoy her as the rest with them. If you go here, this is the same hadith. Look how the Muslim changed the translation. Muhammad, he says, then enjoy her. I mean, okay. She is enjoyed by many other men. You enjoy her too. This is a very conservative prophet advising a Muslim man to enjoy his wife with the rest of the men. Open-minded relationship, open relationship. You sleep with her, they sleep with her, all of us, we sleep with her. We are communist in sex only. We Muslims are communists only when it's come to sex. We share. This is a prophet of God. If we compare this to Jesus, the one who said that if a man, he wished a woman in his eyes, he committed adultery. It's better for you to plug your eye, throw it away. This is a prophet of God. Enjoy her.
Muslims, when they say things to you, we are against adultery. This is the religion of adultery. Muhammad even allowed the Muslims to enjoy women for sex for temporarily. Bang, bang. How you say to me, you are Islam is conservative? In which way? Hmm? Is it this is worshiping idols too? Sex? Sex is an idol in Islam. Muslim, they want to fight for Allah for sex. Muhammad, he promised them endless penis and a vagina fit for that. I don't want to, I don't want to pray. You know, you see, when somebody says, I will give you, I will give you a penis, which is endless. This is the Abdul. Excuse me. You know, if you don't like to see this, please leave. We use art for reasons and I'm very very well-known artist you go you go to Italy ask Anthony Berlusconi about me my art is all over in the world brother this is Abdul Allah he will make his penis endless the screen will not fit for that penis my friend sorry but he promised that the vagina will fit for that that mean a woman she will have a vagina which is in this too how that can be Hello? 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 I mean, are you mad? We wish you a happy Marwa. We wish you. <laughs> what a stupid call. Uh, brother, we are very conservative, brother. We are very conservative. Yeah, right. The prophet allow men and women to enjoy sexual relationship without marriage. The Muslim, they say that, no, this is a marriage. The fact it's not. Actually, the word marriage here does not even appear in the story. Translation The Muslim translation is full of fictions They added the word marriage there But the fact there is no marriage Have you ever heard of somebody marrying somebody For three days, three nights? I mean this is a very lousy religion Hey brother, imagine yourself you want to go to Los Angeles, brother, and you are a Muslim, conservative Muslim, brother. And your wife, she cannot go with you, brother, or one of them, brother, because you have a you have a, a set of wife. Islamic set of wife, they come in packages, four wives at a time. And you cannot carry your wife with you to Los Angeles, maybe because of their heavy weight. What do you do, brother? You marry a woman in Las Vegas. You want to stay for three days, three nights, brother? Halal, brother. You can call a Muslim. Her name is Fatima or Aisha or whatever. And you say to her, please, please, please. Can we enjoy three nights, three days together? And if the woman, she is horny and she say yes, and for sure you have to pay her because this is a pure prostitution, not for free, then it's halal. What do you say, Muslims? This is the paganism of sex. Paganism, paganism is not necessarily about idols. Is anything you are addicted to? Anything you are a slave of? Money is an idol. Power is an idol. Sex is an idol. And I see nothing in Islam except idol worshipping. From kissing the black stone, from practicing as Safa and Marwa, for believing that a stone forgive your sin, to believe that God is a, is a sex vendor, vagina vendor. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Anyone?
Do we have any Muslim want to prove us wrong? Why Muhammad cancel it? Actually, the fact Muhammad did not cancel it. You know, the, you see. Do you remember in the other day we showed you that the the guy he called me and he said yes, this hadith is there. It says we practice the muta during the time of Muhammad, and we during the time of Abu Bakr, and during the time of Omar. So Muslim they practiced muta all the way after Muhammad's death. But I believe what happened. Many Muslims they were disgusted by many teaching of Muhammad and they try to get rid of it and I will show you an example You remember the story where Aisha she claimed that a goat she ate the Quran And by the way the Muslim they say to us that the Quran is not corrupted, but look what we have The verse of stoning and breastfeeding for adult ten times we are very conservative nation. We believe that Allah ordered our women to do breastfeeding for adults in time. Hey guys, I apologize. I have to go uh, because there is a woman here. She is a, a very good believer of, of Allah. She was giving me breastfeeding 10 time and there's one left. We did already nine time. I have to go. Okay, I have to finish the times 10 time so I can sit with her. So this is a God who ordered women to cover their face. Brother, you cannot shake hands with me, brother. But you can shake my boobs and you can suck them. I mean, obviously, we are very, very conservative. How dare you? To shake hand of a Muslim woman how dare you you can only kiss their boobs and suck their nipples only and this is a verse from Allah and look at the disaster this verse was abrogated in recitation but not in ruling what 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 do you mean abrogated by recitation? It does say here that the goat ate it. And why in the world you want to abrogate the recitation if the ruling stay? How you follow a ruling, but you don't want to recite it? What's the problem? Do you notice? There's abrogation for the recitation. They are ashamed of it. They took it off from the Quran. The story here about Aisha and the goat, obviously... <laughs> Somebody, somebody did delete those verses, and Allah abrogated them with five, five time. Okay, what the difference between five time and why Allah? Why Allah changed His rule, man? I mean, this guy Muhammad, he says something in the morning. He said uh, the next day he says something different. What was the problem with ten time? And what is the difference between five time and nine time? I'm really disappointed. I thought Allah is going to make it 90 time. Actually, Aisha, she used to order her sisters and her uh, uh, sister daughters to give their boobs to anyone when I enter upon her. Imagine the Queen of England. She want to meet the ministers she is the queen and now you cannot see the queen unless you suckle the boobs of her daughters because the reason she is asking her her daughters her her uh, sister and her sister daughters because this is the same blood supposedly so it's the same as you suck her boobs When a Muslim scholar, he made a fatwa, and the fatwa is that any woman she wanna go in the bus or in the train, she have to suckle every man there. What? What? What?
and he is the head of the hadith department in the University of Al-Azhar, the highest school of Islam in the world, supposedly. Let me show you the fatwa. I'm searching the private Google. We have advertising. Okay, read with me. You can search for this title if you want. Be curious because Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, uh, actually, the one who came with the fatwa first, it was from Egypt, by the way. And then, then the, the madness is spread around Islamic world because many Muslims, they have never heard of this before. You know, there's many Muslims are Muslims by name. They don't know what this is garbage inside their cut. So, uh, the fatwa is issued by many scholars that a Muslim woman, she should do uh, 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 breastfeeding for a growing man. Why? Because if you fear from mix of gender together, let us say your wife, she work in a library and she is a Muslim woman and there's many men, they enter the library and then they might look at her and desire her sexually. So in order to stop that, you better order your wife to give her boobs to anyone who entered the library. And obviously this is working very good. Imagine if Aisha she was working as a bus driver these days. I mean, we will go nowhere. People will be lined up and doing breastfeeding. Mm, oh man. Huh? Then the Muslims they start saying, Oh, this is contradict the teaching of Allah. That's not true. Here we go. It is the teaching of Allah liars and actually it is Muhammad the first one who ordered it and then he claimed that he received verse from Allah supporting that when the Muslims start making argument about it a woman she came to Muhammad her name is Sahla bin Suhail and she said we have in the house a grown man and my husband look like he is jealous look like this guy here looking at her in a dirty way in a sexual way so she is asking for advice from the prophet the prophet who don't respect muslims obviously he is making fun of them he said suckle him she said what huh I wish at that time there was a video camera recording the Prophet 25 hours, 7 days a week. We would die laughing. Suckle him. She said, how I can I suckle him? And he is a growing up man. <laughs> and you will see the Prophet... He have a big smile laughing. He says, yes, yes, I know he is a growing man. Suckle him. <laughs> Suckle him. <laughs> a laugh of a witch. Everything in your religion is paganism. This is, cannot be from God. Hmm? This is going to be from God. What is left of you? Somebody in the text, he says, I don't celebrate Christmas. I follow Christ. Hmm. My friend, Christmas is the name of a Christ on it. And every day, the Bible says, every day, every day, you celebrate the Lord is the, do the day of the Lord. Every day you celebrate the Lord is a day for the Lord. So, 
if you are a Christian you will not mind to add this day to your celebration because it has the name of a Christ on it if you claim to be Christian Christmas is a day of Christ and any day can be the day of Christ but you know some people they decide to be silly like I follow Jesus Jesus did not follow did not celebrate Christmas I mean how he was celebrating Christmas and why <laughs> anyway as you see the Muslims and the devil Obama himself he fought the Christmas for eight years the liberals the left the atheists they fought the war the Christmas for eight years and the Muslims they have tons of thousands of videos worshiping Allah forbidding Christmas so you want to join them you want to join them you see how much hate for the Christmas they have the devil hate Christmas for very simple reason it has the name of Christ we are not celebrating a date the birth day of Christ will never come back again and by the way those who celebrate their birthday they are just I mean looking for fun I mean there's there's no birthday to come back again you are born you know uh, 20 years or 30 years ago and their day will never come back that day there's no equal date for it we are celebrating the name of Jesus every day every day is my Christmas every day is my Easter every day is my Sabbath for I glorify his name every day now if you have a problem with that that is your problem not mine by the way there is many Christians they think that Sabbath is Saturday Sabbath is not Saturday necessarily it can be Saturday Sabbath is any day you decide to make it a day for the Lord And this is why you see in the Bible many occasion is called Sabbath, but they are not Saturday. Do we have any Muslim here would like to call us? Mayday, Mayday. I want to kiss the black stone and I miss it. Who is going to call me and tell me how to do it? Mwah. black is stone I miss you I miss you I miss you I miss you you are a holy stone of Allah you are the right hand of Allah paganism huh the funny too that the Muslims they say how you worship a man how you worship a man what 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 how you worship a man Who who worship a man? You you Christians you worship a man. You Muslims you worship Muhammad, and your God Allah Himself is a man. I forgot he's an octopus. There's a debate. Let us see if I can find it. Anyone remember my debate with Dr. Nabil Baikli and Imam Malik Sar? In that debate, uh, a scholar who have PhD in Islam, supposedly, he said, "Yes, Allah have a leg, but do you think the leg of Allah is like yours?" <coughs> no, sure not are you kidding me no way that Allah leg is like my leg absolutely not I mean how silly how silly the answer is let me see if I can find you the video hold on give me a second
Let us see. Yeah, I found it. But I'm not sure which uh, which series was the video. I mean, the, there's numbers of them. Like uh, I'm trying to find, trying to find which one. I think maybe it was number nine, number ten. Let us see. It is the the, the water of the women and the water of the man. It is Let us see. Evil. Hold on. It's coming from the chest. To take these towels real quick here. Okay. Well, I will. Uh, you know, first there's the. The sound. And now, Mr. Kafka was a very easy question. I don't agree that this is the water of the egg. Okay. Hold on. But someone, he do not know anything about Islam. He is not, uh, the sound is very bad. Well, I don't know why this recording here is not is good. This one day, as in on the Vulcan uh, mm. formation that's present at that time. So when Allah Allah anyway, day, I got a question. The here. same day that you and I understand. Let us see. Okay. But this is another question, actually. This is another question. I think. Go ahead, sir. Well, we are Muslim by the grace of Allah. That's why we are Muslims. And uh, again, the answer is still in the pudding. And that is uh, that whenever Allah talks about days, just like you mentioned, that there are some days that are 1,000 years, there are some other days... That I'm just trying to find where, where he spoke about Allah. Look. Are you quoting the Quran or are you asking? Hold on. 63. And also in Surah 3.3. Look the Moses. Just to help you, just to help you on the answer. This is Al Qurtubi saying it clearly. This is your scholar. One day for Allah is. Could you please explain on it? Mm, we are Can I repeat my question? Or now we look at leg. He have hands. He okay, has eyes, but all of them they are attached to his leg, and he is not a spirit, and he have no spirit. So your God Allah cannot be our God. Because our God is a spirit, your God is not. Your God is a leg. And honestly, none of us is going to worship a leg. And if you want me to show you a clear explanation from your prophet that your God, Allah, in the judgment they show himself as a leg, I will be happy to show you that. Let me give you the hadith. But again, you, again, the essence of this, and according to Prince, with all respect to him, with all his knowledge about Islam, he's saying, that our Lord, our Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the heaven and the earth, the one who Jesus said, according to the biblical, Ilahi, Ilahi, li my my Lord, my Lord, <laughs> then He has reduced them to a leg. Well, thank you, but we humbly disagree with you on this. And Allah, whether you like it or you don't, He, my Allah, and your Allah, He's the one who created you. He's the one who created the whole earth and whatever is on it. And what is Allah? We don't know what is Allah. Is it his spirit? Does he... Did you, hold things? on. Did you, did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? We do not know what Allah. Did you hear it? We Muslims do not know what is Allah. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Okay, my friend, if you have a weak connection, please don't call me because there's no point. And don't call me and you have a naked picture of you. I mean, a Muslim wanna call me and you have a naked picture. Wear a shirt in your in your in, 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 in your in your top. This is not a strapteza club. So Dr. Nabil Bayakli, who claimed to be a scholar, he said we do not know if Allah, we do not know what is Allah, and we do not know what is Allah about, and we do not know if he is a physical being or he is a spirit. The fact this is a lie. This is taqiyya. Muslim they sure that Allah is not a spirit. And he's a physical being, and you will see how soon he will change his mind after we get him busted. In Surah 287, let's see, following him up with a, a contradiction of what the creation account, then we have there. 
Actually, actually, right. brother, just we yes, have sir. to say that. Okay, let me ask you a question. Of Allah, that's why we are Muslims. And uh, again, the answer is still in the pudding. And that is uh, that whenever Allah talks about days, just like you mentioned, that there are some days that are 1,000 years, there are some other days that are 50,000 years, and there are some other days that are I want to go to the topic about the legend. Why you are rejecting your scholars? It sounds like you are creating a new religion. You are school, but we humbly disagree with you on this. And Allah, whether you like it or you don't, he, my Allah and your Allah is the one who created you. Mm -hmm. He's the one who created the whole earth and whatever right. is on it. And what is Allah? We don't know what is Allah. Is it his spirit? That he, whatever he came about himself, whether he has an eye, he has an eye that fits his glory. And, and, uh, um, thank you very much for raising this. I think you have a leg, don't you? Guys, this is, this is, I'm debating two imams at the same time. One is the imam of the mosque of Tennessee. The one you see him in the screen, his name is Imam Malik Sar. And the other one is the head of Mephesis. Uh, 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 he have a PhD, uh, and supposedly he claimed to be uh, something. Uh, and both of them, they are trying now to explain to me why Allah is a physical being. Listen, uh, li listen to the answer and laugh with me. Listen. Amazing bit. I think you have a leg, don't you? I think you have a leg, don't you? So I'm asking him why Allah have a leg. He said. Okay, thank you for raising this question. I think you have a leg, don't you? Okay. <laughs> and uh, um, thank you very much for raising this. I think you have a leg, don't you? I do. Well, uh, but you according, too, according to Muslims, according to Muslims. Excuse, okay. excuse me, and let me just finish. And if you, you believe you me. have a leg, I believe <laughs> also the dog has a leg. So are you equal to a dog? No. But you still believe you are a human being. Now you have an eye. And of course, the snake has an eye. Are you a snake? You are not a snake. You are a human being. Therefore, the attributes of God as his attributes can never, ever be compared to any other attribute of that which he has created and brought into existence. And I will defeat anybody who can prove from the Quran that God is a leg. Get me the verse right now, and I'm going to read it with the audience as they may follow the word. Guys, man, Christian Prince is in the corner. I challenge anyone, I challenge anyone who can show me from the Quran that Allah is a leg. And now Christian Prince, you have to call a friend. Who is the friend of Christian Prince? Who is the favorite friend of a Christian Prince? That is Zakir Naik. <laughs> and look how excited he is. And look how funny the answer. Okay, Allah have a leg and you have a leg. Does that mean the leg of yours is the same as the leg of Allah? Huh? Uh, no. My leg is nicer. I assure you. Look, look at this. Unbelievable. Uh, by the way, I, this is one of the reasons I took the mirrors out of my house because I can... You know, like even the mirror will be broken when they see the leg of a Christian prince. I mean, look how silly the answer is. The question is why you reject God to be a man, but you accept that your God, Allah, have a hand, have a foot, have a leg. What leg? What he's doing with the leg? We have a guy, his name is Falcon Sky. Falcon, how are you, my friend? If you speak English, Falcon, call me. If you speak Arabic only, Shinu Hada Ya Abdul. Shu Anna Allah La Yasu Uhu Su. Shinu Hada. Kalam Fadi Ya Rajal. Kalam Fadi. All right. Let us continue. Uh, by the way, I wasn't speaking Arabic. I was. Mm, I mean, I think it was a. Uh, I imagined myself speaking Arabic. I'm the same as the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, okay, let me let me uh, prove that to him. Uh, let me prove that to let him. Let me ask this question: Are you saying that God is uh, is not spirit? Okay, you as a human being, 
It has a different thing. Uh, uh, along with the moderator, I, I, no, you know, when you teach sometimes, it is very good to take example from the person right in front of you because that's what they I, may I understand. what you said. Not cutting you off. But I understand what you're saying about human being. I'm not so asking you do questions understand. not directed towards human being. My question is, are you saying that God is not spirit? My question to you, as an answer to your question, is you as... You see, guys, he don't, they don't answer. The guy, this is the host. He's not a debater. He's just a host, supposedly, in the debate. But he's asking a question. Did you say, just, did you say that Allah is not a spirit? The Muslim he don't answer. He says, "My my answer to you is a question." <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> the human being, right. do you have spirit? What does that have to do with me being God? I'm of not course, God <laughs> because you are a product <laughs> coming from the creation, from as a creature of God. Then we may understand God better. My, and if you answer to that question, I'll give you a direct answer to your question. My, my, my point is, if God is not spirit, when the Bible said God is spirit, then uh, my question to you is, will be, if, if the Quran said God is not spirit, then what is God? God is a spirit and a physical being at the same time and you see this is one of the stupidity of muslims those are scholars who they are teaching muslims but he just said that allah is a spirit but you can go right now in google and search you will find that the muslims all of them they agree that anyone who believe that allah is a spirit is a kafir, is a kafir is an infidel this is a guy who is teaching muslim in the mosque he's an imam but yet he is a certified donkey about his religion. This is how confused the Muslims are. Many of them, they think that Allah is a spirit when the fact Islam refused such a belief. And here we go. I am life on air. Who is the Muslim when I call me and prove me wrong that Allah is not a spirit? How such a donkey like this, you give him a job to teach your children in the mosque. The Imam of the mosque. And the head of the Islamic Center, Dr. Nabil Baikli. Both of them struggle to answer a very simple question if Allah is a spirit or not. And the answer is simply no. They are both stupid and they do not know what they are talking about. Allah is not a spirit and he has no spirit. Now, as long as they agree that Allah has a physical body, let us see how they will explain that to us more. And now, what, what, hold on, hold on, Mr. Moderator, now you have to listen when you ask a question. This is why I was referring back to you as a human being thinking, asking you, what are you? Let me clear on You stated that God is, is spirit and physical quality, right? Uh, God has a physical being. But his physical being... See, he changed his mind now. A second ago, he was saying Allah is a spirit and a physical mean, being. I think maybe he received some text from somebody saying to him, are you stupid or what? You know, they are in the mosque. There's many, many around them. They are trying to help them. This is called over radio. So they are in the mosque. I am in my home. Actually, honest, by the way, if you watch the whole debate, you will hear a water running. I was washing dishes. At that time, I used to have a Bluetooth. And I was washing dishes. I thought the sound will not come, but looked like it came later. You know, I was bringing the water, like uh, because supposedly those Bluetooth, uh, uh, they are uh, like they don't pick up sound from far away. So I thought the water. I'm, I'm doing dishes, literally. I'm debating them doing my dishes. All right. Anyway, his attributes are mentioned in the Quran, but he has nothing. To do with what he has created as far as comparison is concerned. You can't compare him to what he has created. He is nothing like what he has created. The video to continue. With what he has created as far as comparison is concerned. You can't compare him to what he has created. He is nothing like what he has created. 
Let me ask you something here. Because we, we, we get it somewhere. Okay. If God, first of all, if God is uh, pure existence, mm -hmm. uh, pure simplicity, meaning that uh, he has no potentiality at all, no possibility to not exist or to be anything other than what he is, pure existence and simple. Now, if God had any, if there was any physicality to God, then he would be undergoing change. Why is that? You, you follow my point? No, no. First, if God is pure existence, a pure actuality. He has no potential of any kind. Mm -hmm. You see, I can prove what you're saying using your Bible, but that's not the topic today. Now, <laughs> anything, it is not demonstrated, not scientifically or physically, that anything that exists will have to go through changes. No. And you cannot prove that anything that exists will have to go through changes. That's one thing. And now you and I, as beings that are not perfect at all, of course, a perfect being as God would not be seen to us as I look at you or look at myself or anybody else. Because he can is my perfect. That's yeah, why he is... Hold on, excuse me, please. Can, can I, I my time? No, we, we, we got your point. We got no, your you point. don't get it yet. You don't get it. No, we get it. You you are saying, it please, please. Let you are speaking for five minutes. I did not speak. I'm, I'm waiting. You don't you know? get my point no. yet. Let me finish. Okay. No, we got your point. We got your point. You, you, you're my thing. You're okay. 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 okay, listen. He is okay. saying okay. that Allah, he has a physical body. He is saying Allah, he has a physical body, but his body I'm is not, not like you. Body. I did not say yeah. body, sir. What is that then? You said physical. What is physical? Physical liquid? I said, I said being, not body. Okay, listen. When Guys, I did not say body. I said physical being. It's not body. <laughs> he said physical being, not body. Muslim, did you hear this? Your God Allah is a physical being, not body. So? If he is a physical being, he is a physical body. Being not body. Okay, listen. When when you're a prophet, he said Allah will show his leg. You just said you have a leg. The dog has a leg. Is that is that mean you are a, do a dog? You agree that Allah he has a leg. That leg is physical or it is a liquid? I want you to open please this hadith with me and read. You're a prophet there is speaking. This is the book 93, Hadith al-Bukhari, verse number five. Uh, sorry, Hadith number five three two S. Read it. You will see your prophet describing saying you will be able to see Allah. They said, How we will see Allah? He said, The same as you see the moon and the, the, the sun in the sky when it's clear. This is how easy. And they said, What we will see in him? What is the sign? He said, You will see his leg. He will show his leg. So Allah, He has a leg, and this leg has to be something physical. And you just agree, agree, agreed that Allah is physical being. Physical being. And the Quran said that, that Allah, he is going to show his leg. Now, if I ask you, Allah, he has a hand, he has a leg, he has an eye. You will say to me, okay, he has a body, but his body is not like yours. His leg, and this is what you were trying to say to me a second ago, when you said, okay, you know what? The dog, he has a leg. Are you a dog? You know, so you are comparing your God to us, trying to prove to us that the leg of Allah is not the same as the leg of us. This is not the problem. Your That's God, Allah, He has nothing except a leg. He is a leg. If I ask you, do Allah have a neck? You will say no. Do Allah have a chest? You will say no. With my respect to you, I'm a fine insult. Do Allah have a waist or a butt? You will say no. So what is left? He is a leg. There is nothing left out of this God except a leg, have two hands, and five fingers. And you will see in Sahih al-Bukhari, your prophet saying that Allah will carry the earth in the top of his five fingers. So he has a physical fingers. He has a real leg. 
And if you, you know, uh, I want you to remember that this this record, this this show is recorded, and all the Muslims they are going to listen to you again. When you say that Allah, He don't have a physical body, Muslims will come to you and say, "From where you got that? Do you have a proof?" I am asking you right now for the proof. I am showing my proof, which is Sahih al Bukhari, from your report, saying that you got Allah has a physical body for real, and it is a leg. You ask him, "Are we going to see God?" He did not say you will see him. A part of him, he said, you will see Allah. How? He will show his leg. So, uh, please, admins, not everyone says something to me wrong. You, you put him in hide. Don't delete the message of the Muslims. All right? Don't do the same as the Muslims. Why you are muting the Muslims in the text? A Muslim, he says, Christian prince, you are a hypocrite. Let him say that. What, what's wrong with that? Don't do what the Muslims do. Let the Muslims talk. Please. If we hide the messages of Muslims, we are doing the same as the Muslim. As long as he is not cursing, as long as he is not saying bad language, as long as he is not using a uh, 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 death threat, you don't hide his message. So what's the point of being here then? If we do the same as they do, the Muslims, they don't allow anyone actually to chat because they are scared of the opinion of someone else. All right? Don't worry about deceiving. We are here. Nobody can deceive us. Do you think somebody can be deceived that we are teaching? Come on. Take it easy on them. Let the Muslims talk. Only if somebody use a very filthy language or he starts stalking somebody or start insulting ladies or females in the in the chat, then you mute them. You deserve it. But somebody says, Christian Prince, you're a liar. So what? Hypocrite. You are okay, say it. So what? Let him say what he he thinks. And we will get him busted. Let us continue. Okay, what is I'm going to read the hadith for you, and I'm sorry. The hadith is saying, Antum satarawna rabbakum yawm al-qiyamati kama tarawna al-qamara laylat al-badari. That's the hadith. I suppose he's speaking Arabic what? now. This guy is squeezing his bum to make it look like Arabic. And this is the imam of the mosque. You were referring to. We know it very well. Now, God has a leg. God has him. God has okay, fingers. Listen, God, please, please. Hold on, read sir. You have to listen God. now if you want to learn. No, brother, brother, listen, listen. listen. Yeah, just, just this way. Read the hadith after. Sorry, I, I mentioned by mistake this hadith. This is hadith number 532C, not S. C. I please, know read the one, hadith sir. you were referring. That's why you have okay, to read that one, please. You don't get okay, read that yet. one, please. Listen to me. Okay. You have to listen. Okay. We believe okay, that God, all these that he has mentioned in the Quran, or Prophet Muhammad is what he has mentioned in the hadith, authentic hadith, those attributes are true and we believe in them as they are, as it is mentioned by Allah and His Messenger. Now, I asked you yourself earlier to show you that I'm not comparing God with you. I said to you that you have a leg and a dog is a leg, but you cannot compare yourself with a dog. That's what I'm saying. Now, do not put words in my mouth. I did not say God has a body. I say a physical being because you and I have have not seen God yet and inshallah we will see him yawm al qiyamati as the Prophet said inshallah ta'ala. You just listen we, now we, and let me conclude inshallah right. for this question. Now Good. for for what you mentioned it is true that those attributes are attributes of God but if you are taking those references, why can't you take the other reference that says, Laysa kamithlihi shayun wa samir al basir Hold on, you have to hold on now and listen. <laughs> Allah, there is nothing like him as he is all hearing and all seeing. You, let if you ask here. us... One moment, let me jump in here. Okay, let, me, let me jump in here and say, uh, because... I think, I think that you're trying, uh, uh, you're trying to have it both ways. 
uh, Islam is trying to have it both ways. First of all, you say that God is absolutely simplicity. Right. That's, that's your words. That's, that's your words, sir, not my words. Okay. Well, let me make let me say let me say this here. God is absolutely simple. God is simplicity. In other words, when I say that God is absolutely simple, a uh, God is simplicity. I'm saying to you that simple means without parts. That's what I'm saying. Simple means without parts. But so what has parts can come apart. So if you right. say that God part. has parts, then what has parts can come up, come apart. Simple means part. indivisible. God is not capable of being divided. There are no things in God. There is no place in which the fabric of his being can be torn or come undone. God's simplicity means that he is absolutely one. Not only does he have unity, but he is absolute unity. You see? You know, so therefore, you, know, you cannot contribute part to God. Now, great. And I, I want to be for, for the people, for people to listen to me. And I'm, and I'm sorry, dear brother. Just for people yes. listening, you said you used the word simple and simplicity and whatever word you use. It did not come out of our mouth. We said that God well, I'm just making is my, a, I'm just making my case. Okay, one of the So now, everybody moderator, is just being going to understand. I'm Mr. Just moderator, you the fact that uh, God is not capable of being divided. And God does not consist of parts. That God is yes. pure existence, pure actuality. I'm saying to you, he has no, God has no potentiality. I'm saying to you that God is perfect. Now, if you know, something is perfect, or one is perfect, and you said absolute, the word absolute means a lot. Oh, hold oh, on, oh, 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 one moment, hold oh, one moment. The, uh, the, the leg of Allah, just a second please. The leg of Allah, he's saying to us, the leg of I, I Allah think, is perfect. I think at least, the leg, at least I should finish my point before no, you take the floor. You're not taking your time more than me. Actually, he's giving you time more than you. Not, more because than you me, don't you know? have answers. I'm the one who has answers. That's why I should take my time. Just, just wait. You know, I want you to read the hadith I gave you after this one because this one will explain. This is your prophet himself. I, I, you know, I understand that you show respect to your prophet. So let us go and see what your prophet is saying. Whatever your prophet is saying, he is right. Or what you are saying to us, Allah, he has a leg, but his leg is not like yours. Allah is not like anyone. I'm not asking you if he like me or not. The leg is a leg. Why Allah, he call it a leg? Simply because it's a leg, which means he walk. You know, a leg, you know, why he did not say a wing? Why he did not say an eye? Why he did not say a nose? He is the one who named that part. To give you answer this one because this one will explain this is your prophet himself I, I you know I understand that you show respect to your prophet so let us go and see what your prophet is saying whatever your prophet saying he is right or what you are saying to us Allah he has a leg but his leg is not like yours Allah is not like anyone I'm not asking you if he like me or not the leg is a leg why Allah he call it a leg simply because it's a leg which means he walk you know a leg you know why he did not say a wing why he did not say an eye why he did not say a nose he is the one who named that part. He is the one who give it a name and a title, not me. So you don't come after me saying to me, oh, you cannot use it as a leg as you think. Well, he is the one who used it, not me. He called it a leg. It means it's a leg. So you Muslims to run from what your God is saying. You have to pay around the world. Say, oh, you know what? It's not like a leg like yours. I don't care. This is not the question. Maybe it's a beautiful leg. Maybe it's the most amazing leg, but it is a leg. Who name it a leg? It's your God. Who explain it as a leg? It's your prophet. And it's not up to you to say, well, this leg is different. No problem. I'm not saying my leg is the same. Will my leg have a lot of hair? This is not the question. <laughs> I'm not comparing myself to your God, Allah, sir. I am Thank not you. saying. Thank you. Thank you. you. Yeah. But I think, I think you, 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 you want to focus on words and play with words. And that's not how we approach, you know, when it comes to reading the words of God. That's not how we approach things. Unfortunately, we do not play with words. <coughs> you want to prove to me that my Lord, who is your creator, 
and your protector, your sustainer, your provider, you he is want not my Lord. to reduce him. Okay, you want to reduce him to a leg and want to focus on the word leg. Now, it's not me. It's you can ask, and this time I'm not. This time I'm not referring to God. But <laughs> can I, uh, is, is there any leg that has an eye or hand or fingers? No. Well, this is why Allah. Is not this is what, no, 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 no. This is, Please, no, no, listen. Yes, this is why Allah. This is why Allah is not like no, any no, leg. Yeah. Let me. This is why. I think you said earlier that you went to school, and part of what you learn in school is to, to learn how to listen. And I it's want an to Arabic make school, my anyway. point before it's you. Arabic school. You, an, an Arabic school. Arabic school teaches that. Now, okay, listen. wonderful, great. Now, I'm saying you want to reduce him to that, but you are not quoting the Quran, saying the Quran reduced him to a leg. That's what I'm saying. And what I told you and Mr. the moderator earlier is that God is a being with attributes far from looking like his creature's attributes. He is the absolute being and the beginning of everything. So why do you want to go ahead and give an image to him like what you have as you have not seen him and still cannot sense the being of God as a perfect and absolute being. Now let us be Great. frank and let, let us be answer. also open as intellectuals in order to debate this clearly. What I want you to do is, if you cannot compare yourself with a dog or a monkey, why do you want to reduce God as a perfect being a leg as you mentioned in the Quran or in the Hadith that he has a leg or an eye or a hand or fingers? Why do you want to do to God what you do not accept to, to yourself as he is perfect and you are not perfect? Great. Let, now, let, let me use our let common sense you. and debate this. Okay, let me answer you. First, I am not the one who compare myself to anyone. It's your God. When he named his, his leg as a leg, he did. He did put himself in a title, not me. I am not the one who named his part as a leg. It was him. Ask your God why he called it a leg if it's not a leg. So it's a leg, but it's not a leg. But this leg doesn't look like a, like a leg. But this leg is different from your leg, but it's a leg. But so you are playing with the word. And you are saying, can you compare your, your leg with a dog? Yes, you can. You can say this is a leg of a human. This is a leg of a dog. This is a short leg, hairy. It looks like a leg of a dog. This is a leg of a human. We can compare. Who said we cannot? We can compare as long both as they are legs. It doesn't make me really a dog. It doesn't make him a human. But both are legs, and we can compare. We can count how many bones they have. We can, we can make a study, and this is how we can make a This is a leg of a human. This is a leg of a dog. You think you can, you, you know, are, you are insulted by saying, you oh, you are comparing Let me jump in, guys. Let me jump in. I Let think you are an Arab. <laughs> you see, a leg made Islam in chaos. The leg of Allah. The leg of Allah made Muslims do not know what to say. Oh, you have a leg. Allah have a leg. Is the leg of Allah like yours? Who care? Can we compare between legs? Yes, we can. And the proof is God himself. He called this part a leg. If it's not a leg, why he call it a leg? Why he don't call it window? Call it, uh, uh, you know, a hair. He call it a leg. When we name a part, we name the duty, the job of the part. So the hand do something. The leg do something else. This is why we don't say the dog have four hands. We say he have four legs. Why? Because he don't have hands which doing the job of a hand. But two Muslim cleric, they are in chaos. They have nothing to say and they cannot answer and they are in trouble. They keep preaching to us that Allah is nothing like Allah. Brother, Allah is the most amazing God, Allah. But they cannot even know who is Allah. All what they knew that Allah has no spirit and he is a physical being. How this religion can be a religion? Galen, I believe, that had a theory much similar, if not almost identical to Muhammad's. But I would also like to read you something out of the Bible, which is in the book of Job, which is over probably a thousand years 
older than Muhammad. Let's like go to the Muslim but, speaking. But the, that embryology was not there when the Quran was written. I'm saying science was not developed enough in order to explain things as they explain it today. And this is why the scientists, most of them, they refer to the Quran mainly to those verses talking about how a human being is created in order to say yes, in the 7th century, the answer was there, but science was not as developed as to bring the explanation to that which was mentioned in the Quran. Yeah, as I mentioned in the Quran, what is the Quran? Let us see what the Quran is saying. Let us get them busted. Science, you see right away they change the topic and they try to say to us, how we explain to us that science in total agreement with the Quran. Let me show you the science, my friend, so everybody will laugh at you and at your science. How Allah, he created the baby. Try not to laugh. All those verses are speaking about how Allah created the baby. Then we have made the sperm into a clot. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This is science, brother. The sperm of the man will turn into a dead blood. Allah, he knows how he created the baby. Science don't know that. This is science? This is science. We made the sperm into a congealed dead blood. Please, my sperm, please don't die. Please don't turn to be blood. Mean. That is science the muslims they have thousands of videos about science in the quran i get them all busted get my book quran and science and die laughing at your science this is science let me show you more science your prophet dr muhammad he explained how the baby would become a boy and how the baby resembled the father and the mother. How? Read with me, please. The science. The messenger of Allah said, the man water is thick and wide. And the women water is thin and yellow. Whichever of them comes first, the child will resemble the parents. And here is the good news. If there is any lady except to marry me today, I will promise you I will never come first. So we can guarantee that the baby will be not a boy and he will not look like me, which is scary. Finally, now we can control how our baby look like. Or what we need to do. If you are ugly, don't come first. If your wife don't look good, let the man come first. It's very simple, brother. This is a very pure science, brother. This is science. Doctors and science, they prove Muhammad. Absolutely, man. I mean, who are you kidding me? The prophet, if he says something, must be true. This is true. Do we have any Muslim want to call us? Only Muslim, please. Who is a Muslim want to call us? No Christian, please. Only Muslims. Mr. Dan Adam, are you a Muslim? Who is a Muslim would like to give us a call? Mayday, Mayday. A Muslim is needed. Mayday, Mayday. Hello? Hello? 
If I want to tell you the science of the prophet is beyond imagination, you might go crazy. You might go not. You will be jumping like a monkey. Quran and science? Are you sure? Your God even cannot remember which one he created first, the stars or the trees. Hello? It's me you're looking for. You never heard this before. And I'm sure you are going crazy. Hello? Any Abdul? An open challenge. Always using illogical. I am the one is you. So this is your logical for you, guys. A Muslim saying I am using illogical. Illogical. This is your prophet, not me talking. Your prophet saying if you have orgasm first, the baby will look like you. And by the way, most of Muslim women didn't have orgasm because they do circumcision for them. If not all. And the proof is Muhammad wife herself, she don't even know what orgasm. Any Muslim? Isn't it the wife of Muhammad? She said to him, huh? what? Women have orgasm? <laughs> what? <laughs> the wife of Muhammad, she never heard of orgasm. You tell me why. What Muhammad was doing when he was sleeping with her? Hmm? This is the wife of Muhammad asking when a woman she came to Muhammad obviously she have no shame and she's saying that she was dreaming about some men who they are very handsome in her dream and obviously she was touching herself so she said to the Prophet of Allah after a woman she have discharged should she wash her vagina the wife of Muhammad she said <laughs> she smiled saying <laughs> What? <laughs> Does the woman has a charge? <laughs> a witch smile. The wife of Muhammad, she never heard of a woman having a charge. You tell me why. What was Muhammad doing in bed? Hello? 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 I mean, obviously, Muhammad was so good in bed. To the point his wife, she never heard of this before. What? Are you kidding me? Women, they come? Since when? Well, I understand why the wife of Muhammad she never have this charge, because the hadith confirmed that Muhammad never have sex with them. He imagined that he's having sex. I mean, somebody had to do it. Isn't it the hadith says that the prophet he imagined himself having sex? In fact, he never did. So how the poor wife she would have this charge? The prophet continues for such and such a period, imagining that he had slept had sexual relationship with his wife, but in fact, he did not. Hmm.
Prophet, how was your night yesterday, brother? I was like a missile, like a drill machine. Then again, then again, then again, then then. Even there is a hadith says that the prophet used to f all his wives. Excuse my language. He f all his wife in less fi sa sa in Arabic today is equal to an hour, but in the time of Muhammad was used for a time between fifteen to twenty minutes. So Muhammad he have at least thirteen wives. And God knows how many slave for sex, but he f them all in less than 20 minutes. And now I know why he can do it. Now I understand how well he was able to do it because he was imagining. If you Muslims believe that Muhammad is suffering from illusion, how you can trust him that he saw angels? Hmm? Once the prophet was bewitched, so he began to imagine that he had done a thing which, in fact, he did not. Hold on. We have a bewitched prophet. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to convert now to accept the bewitched prophet to be your favorite one. If we say to the Muslims, you're a prophet bewitched, they will be insulted and they will be offended. Hello? Hello, Shri. Yes, my friend. Uh, and I'm texting with a Muslim. All right. He's he's saying that Muslim is great, but just I, I want to lo not lose your time. I just want to a chapter where Allah say no one can go beyond the space. Uh, oh, you want you want us to talk about nobody can go out of the space? We yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. After I finish this one, I will go there. I promise you. All right. Oh yes. Okay. okay then I will I will refer to Abdul who is chatting with me. Oh. He says that Muslim go to NASA, go to his space, etc. Et but but what? Mm. Me, I want to refute him. All right. No problem, my friend. We will show you. Okay. Soon. Okay. Take All care. Right. Take care. Thank uh, you. By the way, by the way, I, I can pass a message. All right. Sure. To all you, sir, who are listening right now, New Year is approaching. Instead of losing your money, go to shopping, drinking, use some little money, do a donation for CP. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And by the way, pray for our brother here. You know, uh, he have uh, he have uh, uh, like uh, an illness. But as you see, he's a smart person, and uh, he think wisely, and he is in a good shape. And Muhammad supposedly is the one, the Muslim, they claim that he is healthy, and look what he is doing. So we pray for you, my friend. May the Lord bless you and uh, help you with your illness. Uh, so as you see here, the Muslims, they get upset for reading for them what is written in their books. It's a scary. And the wisdom of Muhammad is beyond imagination. Muhammad was a very special man. You can ask him about farting. My uncle, he asked Allah Apostle about a person who imagined that he farted <laughs> during the prayer. Allah Apostle replied, he should not leave the prayer Unless he hear the sound and smell the sound. <laughs> uh, uh, oh boy, I mean, this is so good. Obviously, Dr. Muhammad, I mean, this guy is, he is the consultant for anything. I mean, are you kidding me? 
you can ask Muhammad any question you want he have an answer for it right we have any Muslim before we start uh, answering about the question our brother he asked any Muslim please feel free if we go in the Quran chapter 55 verse number 33 let us go there we will leave the debate here we are done with it and we go all right Uh, this is 56 we need 53 all right <clears throat> you know each time we try to uh, to to speak to Muslims, uh, they give us their own solution and their own answers. And uh, actually, this is fifty three. Why I'm going there? Hold on, hold on. This is one fifty fifty five. A Rahman, yeah, is it a Rahman? I think it's a Rahman. Hold on. They say to us that Islam speak of science. Yeah, here. Speak of science and Islam speak of knowledge and Islam speak of challenges and Islam says things nobody heard of before and I agree You know Islam he say things nobody heard before not for us, but the Arab before Islam they heard of it This is why it many times appear in the Quran that the Arab says to Muhammad. This is the fairy tales of the people before us and this is an example Muhammad he taught his followers that they should believe in a genie and there's many naive Christian they think that the word genie is a demon Islam and Muslim do not believe in demon so for those naive one who keep repeating the same thing please inform them that Muslim do not believe in demon genie or creatures created from fire and they are not a spirit they are physically exist, but they are a transformer. They can transform themselves. Even they can go through your blood. Even they can have sex with a human being, male or female. And the genie are male genie and female genie. And they have religion too. And shaitan himself is a genie, which means he's one of the jinn. Now, in the chapter 55, verse number 33, it says, O assembly of jinn and men, if it be ye can pass beyond the zones of the earth, the earth, the heaven and the earth pass ye not without authority shall you be able to pass. What is it? What does that mean? It's mean you cannot leave because if you try to leave, Allah will shoot your ass. How we can prove that? Just go down in the Quran. One verse more, you will see. On you will be sent, O evil ones. Twin, twin. This is false, by the way. The translation is not really. It doesn't say that. Uh, a flame of fire and smoke, and no defense you will have. Which means they will try to go out of the zone of the earth. But if you try to go, Allah will shoot you. He is a challenging two creatures. Yeah, master of genie will ins or human and genie, not only genie, both. And if you try to go out of the earth, Allah will shoot your ass by a fire. And by the way, I saw that uh, the guy who went to the moon, uh, the Muslim, they say he converted to Islam, which is a big fat lie. And a Christian TV, they have an interview with him, and he said this is a joke. Uh, but there is a truth about that when he went to the moon. He said he felt something burning his ass True story 
when Allah he say that if you try to go out of the zone of the earth Allah will shoot your ass and he will burn your ass and he will destroy you how the Russian how even the Soviet Union who they are communists they are not even Christians at that time they were able to go out of the zone of the earth do you see it isn't it this is a proof that Muhammad is a false prophet in different verse in the Quran, Muhammad he said the following: "We are not done. Are we? No, we are not. Why Allah created the stars? Allah created the stars so He can shoot you in your ass if you try to go out of the earth. And we have from we have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps." LED lamps and we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away the evil ones if we go and read the interpretation for this you will see that Muhammad he claimed I hope it's a Muslim hello Mr. Prince. Yes. How are you today? I'm fine. Are you Muslim, my friend? Yes, it's Mr. Go Live Media. All right. What do you want to say to us, Mr. Go Live Media? I just wanted to know what the subject is today. I see you talking about um, the stars that have been created to shoot anyone who goes um, mm. um, of the realm in the backside, if I'm correct. Yeah. No uh, problem. Go ahead. Do you want to talk about that? Go ahead. Uh, what's the problem with it? Do you really believe that we can shoot um, a, a devil who live in the earth by a star? Why not? The star is so big. Do you know how big the star is? There are many different types of stars. As well, right? How? What is the smallest star according to science? I don't know, me. I'm not a scientist. Uh, you tell the me? The sun is a smallest star, as an example, and it's million time maybe bigger than the earth. How you can shoot a star to the earth? To destroy a little tiny genie who your prophet tried to capture him and even he hold he have hold on him and then you know you want to need a star to shoot him to prevent him from going this is a star war of george bush oh it's actually referring to black magic so i mean the suit says in the fortune tellers what black um, magic my friend what, what black magic read with me it says the shayateen you know what shayateen mean right and we made it and we made it yes, as yes. missiles you know to shoot at yes. the shayateen okay so this mm -hmm. is speaking specifically about shooting shaitan if he tried to get out of the earth and according to it your prophet to according to your prophet uh, he claimed that shaitan he go to allah heaven try to spy at him right so the the reason I mentioned black magic was because um the suit says you know as you if you know anything about black magic which you probably do it's sort of like um communicating with spirits and jinns mm. to tell the future or whatever it may be mm. um so the jinns used to go to the lowest heavens to eavesdrop and then they would bring back information mm. to the um the suit sayer or the fortune teller but okay. after a while um Allah guarded the lowest heaven and he would shoot them with shooting stars so, so they can only eat so, for maybe a second okay. so if I may talk yeah. please so you are saying to me the the uh, this is before Muhammad they used to go and spy correct yeah okay after Muhammad Allah he installed a new security system if you want to call it that okay why Allah don't want to shoot the shaitan before Muhammad why before he allowed the shaitan to go and spy but after Muhammad he came Allah he stole a new security system if they try to go to heaven Allah will shoot them what is the purpose okay before I continue I just want to ask one condition hmm. please be fair and don't mute me because I noticed in our last conversations you only put my, the volume my, up my, my, my friend if if somebody tried to speak over me make me shout and lose my voice I'm speaking for many hours as you know and if somebody mm. want to make me scream scream then I will give up I will hang up on you I don't have to talk to you, you don't have to talk to me so let us be respectful and I will see did I hang up on you as long as you let me talk and I let you talk let us have a conversation mm -hmm. okay now so you're a prophet after he came Allah he decided to protect the heaven from the spy of the shaitan 
why he did not do that before Muhammad? Was, um, as you know, I think we've had this discussion before with regards to magic and the demons, and it's all part of Allah's makeup of how everything works and the test for man. So the angel, angels that brought down the black magic at Babylon, Harut and Marut, and then uh, another situation where Solomon had the genes working for him That's to build question, the temple. Solomon. Here we go. We are going in a circle now. We talk about that. We can go back and talk again. But answer me about this: Why Allah now He implement a security system not before Muhammad He came. Muhammad is the last prophet. Muhammad came after 124,000 Muslim prophets, according to Muslims. Okay. What make Allah now? Now Allah, he remembered to install a security system. Shaitan was spying all this time at Allah and Allah don't care. What happened? Well, that's totally up to God. You're questioning God. Like, no, you can't everything have a reason. Now. What is it's the reason? Mom. Everything, everything have a reason. So Allah, before he did not mind that Shaitan spy at him. Now, this Allah, he did not, he, he don't want Shaitan to spy at him no more. What happened? Well, well, according to Islamic belief, yeah. it's the same reason why um, the Torah came and the um, the Bible came okay. and then how, Islam how came. How Shaitan can those, spy? Those Explain those to us how Shaitan can spy at Allah. Okay, do you remember our previous conversation when I was trying to make a distinction mm -hmm. between Iblis, Shaitan, Lucifer, the one big Satan that was kicked out of heaven? Mm -hmm. And then you have the other jinn, um, which some of them are Muslim, some of them are whatever religion, and the ones who work for shaitan out of the jinn, they are called shayateen okay. in the plural, yeah? No. So, repeat your question, please, sorry. What, how shaitan or shayateen they spy at Allah? Allah is in heaven, and mm -hmm. the heaven have many gates, many doors. If I show you yeah. the story of your prophet, he said that even the yes. heaven have seven right. gates, Correct. right? Okay, so there are seven gates before they can arrive to Allah. How they can spy at Allah speaking? Well, um, they, they they basically well um, with regards to the jinn, there are different types of jinn: flying ones, walking ones, whichever ones. Mm. There's a powerful one called an ifrit. A ifrit, um, mm. ifrit yeah. A ifrit. And I would assume they, they flew up to the lowest heaven mm. and tried to spy on the ongoings in the lowest heaven from the outside, literally in terms of listening into sound. How they can listen, you know, the, the, the distance between the heaven and each uh, the other one is 500 years and there is seven doors and seven walls. So how the genie, the Afrid, the one you call him Afrid, he can listen to what Allah is saying behind seven doors. What they do? I well, mean, think they, of, you think like think they, do, it, they do hacking or if something? You was, if you was to go and put your head on someone's door mm. in, in front of their house, I'm sure you'll hear something. Hmm, but uh, there's seven doors be 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 before they can hear anything. There's yep. seven doors. Are you, are you telling me that Allah, he built those doors and they are useless? No, well, um, the doors and the gates have a significance. What is the, um, what is the, the point way, of those the way, doors? Yeah, the but, way you're portraying it, it's almost like you're saying there's door upon door upon door. Yes. It's more there's doors in certain places. So some gates are like the gate of fasting. Another gate may be the gate of praying. Another gate may be the gate of charity. My friend, no, is it? A, no, 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 no. This is not true. That's not true. The gates we are talking about are physical gate, and there's doors, and there's there's guards. And your prophet, each time he fly, uh, 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 he know the guard. The, 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 the famous yeah. night journey. Yes. Yes. The guards they ask, uh, uh, who is he? That he was invited. You know. So uh, when when we speak about the doors, we speak about not doors in the same wall. There are doors, there are seven gates in seven fences, and the distance between them, according to your prophet, 500 years. So now you are saying to me that the angels, they can come and they go, and there are seven doors and seven fences, and yet they can put their head, head or their ears on the fences of the heaven, and they can listen to what Allah is saying. Correct? Well, if it's the lowest heaven, hmm. I'm assuming it would be the the last gate, the one gate for the exit. Okay, but Allah so, is in like the seventh heaven. heaven. But Allah is in the seventh heaven, right? He's on top of the heavens. Okay, he is, but he is in the, uh, in the he is on the last heaven, the seventh heaven, right? He's not in the heaven, no. He's, He's um, above the heavens on his throne in mm. a manner that suits his majesty. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. But according to your prophet, okay, in the in the seventh heaven where Allah is located, do he have air? Yeah, we only go by what we've been told. If there's, so if there's, if there's would, anything above Allah, there's okay. After Allah, I wouldn't believe that God needs air to breathe. Okay, if there's anything above Allah, no, 
Okay. Well, your prophet, he said that there is something above Allah. Read with me, uh, please. This is Sahih Hadith says, I said, oh Allah Messenger, where was our Lord before he created the, his creation? He said, he was above the cloud before which was air and above which was air and water. Do you see it? Hold on. It's because I'm on the Skype. I'm not actually looking at the YouTube, but I'll be there shortly. Hmm. But anyway, do you continue? Okay. So Allah, he is not as Muslim they claim. Here we go. There's air above him and there's air underneath of him. And there's even water there. So, you know, you say to me that Allah is above the heaven. He is in, you know, in a, in a place where there's water and air. And there's air above him and there is air underneath of him. Now, maybe because there is air, the shaitan, he can spy at him. Because as I know, sound does not travel in the space. Scientifically, yes. Hmm. So how the shaitan can hear the sound of Allah if the space is empty and there is no air? Well, once again, mm. uh, we believe in the unseen and the knowledge of the ghaib, as mm. they say. Mm. And whatever God wills, um, he wills. And if he said it, we believe it. Mm. Okay. Now, when Allah, he said that you cannot go out of the zone of the earth and he is challenging the mankind and the genie. And then we find that people, they went to the moon. So how Allah, he made a challenge, which is a false challenge. So are you talking about challenge in um, Surah Taha? A chapter of Ar Rahman. Ar -Rahman. Chapter of Ar Rahman. Ar -Rahman. Yeah. yeah. Fudu illa bi right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, well, he made this challenge after he's created the barrier with the shooting stars. Okay. But after that, the American they went there, the Russian they went there, and you know, and uh, how this happened. Well, so how Allah he challenged the man and the genie to go. Yet they go. No. Oh, no, no, you're talking about NASA missions and comparing them to the lowest heavens. The lowest heavens cannot be seen. And they cannot be reached by our means. Ah, they cannot reach. Okay. These are humans. Okay. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Isn't it your God, Allah? He said that we decorated the lowest heavens with the stars. I'm not sure. Can you bring up the reference. What? Well, what do you mean? I don't know the reference. Suddenly, you do not know the reference. You know? Here we go. The reference in the front of us in chapter uh, 67, verse number five. And we have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps. So the lowest heaven starts from where the lamps are exist. And we are in we, we belong to a lamp, actually. We as an earth, we belong to the sun as a group of planet, correct? We have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps, mm. and we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away evil ones. Mm. Yes, but that, that could be paradise within that heaven. It could be just referring to it as the sky. The sky oh, my friend, the, according to your God, according, is, according to your God, there's only stars only in the lowest heaven. So if you arrived to where there is a stars, which is the space we have around the earth, you are in the lowest mm -hmm. heaven already. So Shaitan, he arrived to the lowest space where the stars are in this space. And then we know that the space is empty and there's no voice can go through. How shaitan he can hear Allah from the seven heaven? Because um, in the realm of the jinn is a totally different realm compared to the realm of, of mankind. Hmm. So what about the I'm human being? What about, what about the human be being? Okay, what about the human being? We go back. So when Allah, he challenged the genie and the human being to go out of the zone of the earth. You know what the zone of the earth, right? Yeah, skies and the hmm. galaxies. So what so how how they were able to go out of the zone? No, the zone of the earth is not like a galaxy. What galaxy? The zone of the earth is you cannot you cannot leave the earth. As simple as that. Right. Well, like I said, in in the world of the shayateen, we're not really in the world of the unknown. What about the human? The human? The human? The human? Spirit, the, the human there'll they be different up. laws of science. Mm. There'll be different laws of science. Well, they went up there. They didn't see the paradise. They didn't. They didn't see anything with their eyes. Okay, they they still do today. Haven't seen a jinn. Question: How your prophet he went there? He. It, it was a miracle. How? He. He. He physically went there. It okay. wasn't in a. How? How? How he went there? Well, um, he went on a beast called Burak. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a winged horse, as people say, mm -hmm. but it's between the sizes of a horse and a donkey. It's, it's something that's not of this world, so it's right. hard to describe. Okay, flying, uh, flying, but that doesn't have wings, correct? Okay. 
So, in that heaven, in that heaven, the product no, 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 of Allah, no. it might have wings. I think it does have wings. No way. I never saw that it says have wings. I don't know. I never saw that. Maybe you can show me. I will learn from you. But as I know, it is a sexy female mule, very white, because Allah, he hit black people and he hit black color. <laughs> Where did you get this stuff from? Yeah, because like, like, because when it, you get this sexy female immune, what, what are you talking about? Sure, we can. You know, what are you talking about? Isn't it? Isn't it your prophet? He described how beautiful this uh, beast is. So yes, it's a sexy female, which is very white, and it's a very have a long legs, and each head of her leg can go to the beyond the horizon. Now, if we go, and we ask you, is the beast is a physical beast the one you call him beast, not me? I believe he's like just a donkey between a mule. He's a mule between the horse and the donkey. That's a mule. So that mule who is very white, huh, which is female in the same time, because supposedly he is different kind of animal, who, who, who went all the way to heaven. What is, you know, this is, this is a physical journey. You said physically, Muhammad, he went there, correct? Yes. Okay. Did he find in the place where he arrived, to the heaven, he found the Euphrates River. The what river? Sorry, Euphrates. The Euphrates. Oh, Euphrates. Hmm. Um, yes, okay. there is some narrations regarding that. All right. I think so. So, so, so how narration. how in the heaven of Allah, which is in the sky, in the seven heaven, there is Euphrates. Well, that's down to how Allah designed paradise. But your fritis is in exist in the in the, in the south of Turkey. Yes, and why can't it exist in paradise? Why can't they be an identical one? My friend, my friend, don't you see? Your fritis, you see, the, the old testament speak that the garden of Adam and Eve is in a certain location, and it mentioned even the, the river Euphrates, but it makes sense. This is in the earth. The garden of Adam and Eve in Christianity and Judaism is not in the sky. It's a garden in earth. Now, your prophet, he found that Euphrates and the Nile River are from the rivers of heaven. So if his heaven is up in the seven galaxy, whatever it is, how we find the Nile River and Euphrates there? Because it's down to God how he wants to design things like I mean, my friend, but they are the not world. there, they are here in earth. You, uh, if you're a prophet, yeah. he went how they are, how the Nile is here in Africa, go through Ethiopia, go through Egypt, all the way to the sea, and then we find that the river of the Euphrates is start and under the tree of Allah in the seven heaven. Because it could be identical rivers, like I said, we don't really have a map. Of the geography of paradise and heaven, do we? Ah, okay. So, but don't you think that Muhammad here is making up stories that this is a heavens, that this is Mount, like this is a, this is a, uh, uh, this is what heaven is about, and there's rivers. One is called Euphrates, and one is called Nile, and obviously he's confused between the Garden of Eve and the Garden uh, of Eve in Islam and the Garden of Eve in the Bible. If I ask you now, so you, the Garden of Eve uh, in Islam, sure. the Garden yeah. of Eve in Islam, is it in Earth or in Heaven? The Garden of Eve. Hmm. Um, you tell me. No, you tell me. You're the Muslim. I'm asking you about Islam, not Christianity. Well, the Garden of Eve, hmm. did you say? Hmm. I'm not sure. Is there something called the Garden of Eve on the earth? Hmm. I'm asking you. The is the Garden of Eve is in heaven or in earth? The Garden of Adam Eve, and Eve, where Adam and the, Eve the, they used to be living there. Is it in heaven or it's in earth? I would say it's in heaven. All right. That's a, that's a good answer. According to Islam, yes. According to Christianity, no. Now, uh, as long you agree that the heaven of Adam and Eve is in there in the heaven, and Muhammad he says that there is a tree where underneath three, four rivers they come from there, and then we find that the Nile River and the the Euphrates River. They are here in the earth. Uh, there's no way they are coming from heaven. I mean, this is very silly. Obviously, your oh. prophet is very confused about where are they located and what heaven he's talking about. There's no way Muhammad, he went to the sky, yet he is talking that he found the Euphrates River and the Nile River coming out of the tree of Allah. It's possible. As you know, as a Muslim, you know, when you ask me, 
um, could your prophet have lied? You probably already know I'd rather jump off a tall building than ever mm. say my prophet, peace be upon him, lied. Mm. So who? The prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Rather, uh, before I accuse the prophet of lying, I, I would rather die 50 times over. I'm, sure you're aware not, of. I'm not asking you to accuse anyone. I'm just trying to have a conversation for you, my friend. I'm not insulting. Yeah. For me, Muhammad is an official certified liar. You know, I say it as it is. But you are a believer, no problem. But as you see, your prophet, he claimed that he found rivers and he called them Sihan and Jihan. And those are rivers are exist in the, in the, in the Middle East. So Sihan and Jihan and your fatis and the Nile. He found them where? Coming from under the tree of Allah. And then we, we find in the Quran that Muhammad is speak about that if you go to heaven, Allah will try to shoot you. And where the heaven is the lowest heaven where it is. This is where he shoot the shaitan. In the lowest heaven where the lamb are located. Okay. Now Muhammad here is arriving to the Nile and to the Euphrates. So he did not go to heaven. Well, that's your opinion. How no, do you, you know what's no, you tell, My friend, no, you tell me. Okay, now I want your opinion. How your prophet, he went there and he found the source or the spring of the Nile River and Euphrates. How both of them, they are coming from under one tree. Nile is in, 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 in the middle of Africa. And the Euphrates is in the south of Turkey. So we have thousands of miles between them, yet both of them, they are coming from under one tree is the tree of Allah. Well, it could be identical rivers that are in paradise. And like I said, we don't know the creation of paradise. We don't know how paradise was created, um, how, what was within paradise, the geographical realms and what it's like. is nothing like the human eye has ever seen. Mm. So for you to make a comparison mm. with the earth, I, I don't see the point. My just friend, because it's very funny you said to me nothing nothing we can compare with the heaven and yet you say your prophet he says to you honey and milk isn't it honey and milk is money and, and honey and milk is not it oh. wine is wine is yes. it is it is it your fruities as a river we know is it the nile is a river we know so how nothing we can compare but they have it we have what they have already we have your fruities we have the, the nile we have the honey and we have the milk Yes, okay. but the milk and the honey um, and the wine will not be the same as of this world. Mm. It will be totally different. Mm. For example, that uh -huh. that does not intoxicate. Um, so once again, it's like me saying to you, mm. describe heaven. So you are saying to me, the wine and the heaven, they will be they will be alcohol free. Well, we don't know that, but we know it does not intoxicate. Okay, so they are alcohol, but you will not get toxicated. So the wine is the same, but you will. I don't know if it's yeah. alcohol. You see what, like what, what the tafsir says that the, you will not get toxicated. It's not the wine is not wine. The wine is a wine, but you will not get it drunk. Now that's a good thing for you. I'm so happy for you. But you will notice with me here, we are going in a circle, trying to avoid that Muhammad cannot be a person who went to the seven heaven as he claimed. First of all, there's no witnesses. Is that correct? I give you the response of Abu Bakr as Siddiq Radi Allahu Anhu. What he said? Did he say he went? Did he say he went? Then he did. Abu Bakr, he said he went. Did he see him? Yeah, and he said if the Prophet said it, it happened. Ah, here we go. If the Prophet said it. <laughs> My friend, what kind of answer this answer is? I'm saying to you, do Muhammad have a witness or not? No. Let me tell you something. Yesterday, I went to the seven heaven in the top of a flying uh, chicken. Do you believe me? No, because you're a great liar. Okay. So how <laughs> if I say that, how if I say that is a lie, but if your prophet, he say that, is it true? Both of us, we have no witnesses. But he is a prophet and he performed miracles. He spread Islam across the world. Look mm. at the things this man did. Yeah, but he did. This is not the work of a normal man. What did what he, he did? do? He destroyed, he destroyed was... the world. People, they cannot even walk in the street safe. People, they cannot How... have safety. What? People, they cannot have security. Men are killing women. Men are raping women. Women, they cannot walk in the street securely alone unless there is a guardian with them. Otherwise, they will be raped by Muslims. Number one countries of rape in the world are Muslim countries. In Saudi Arabia, if a woman, she walk around in the street without a guardian, she will be raped, kidnapped, and nobody would hear about her again. So what Muhammad did? Muhammad, he brought nothing but disaster. Now answer me. So let, jealous. Let me show Muhammad. everybody. Let me show everybody that you Muslims are are fairy tale followers. Where in the Quran it says that Muhammad 
he went or he taken to the heaven what did you show me you show me you show me you are the Muslim where in the Quran, I'm, I'm not, where in the Quran sure. it says where in the Quran my friend I want I'm asking you where in the Quran I mean such a thing happened the Quran says that the Arab they keep asking Muhammad for a miracle well if this is if this has happened that's this is a miracle to go up to heaven isn't it yes of course okay yeah. okay so why the Quran says we refrain from sending miracles if he took Muhammad to heaven chapter 17 verse number <coughs> uh, 59 says that Allah he refrained from sending miracles okay but you say to me that the Prophet said that Allah took him to the seven heaven where you can show me that in the Quran that Allah took him to the seven heaven it, it, it may not be in there so um, you are saying to me such a thing which is extremely important is not in the Quran but in the Quran we have a story that an ant she told the other ants to hide Allah have time to tell us the story what happened between the ants Allah has well, time to tell us about the bird who is, his, who, is a, who is a captain in the army of general in the army of the chicken Allah have time to tell us all the fairy tale stories uh, stories about the flying carpet of Suleiman but Allah has no Mosh. time to tell us how Muhammad he went to heaven well it's totally up to him what he puts in the Quran isn't it but secondly mm -hmm. um, we look we get our prayers from the discussion that happened between Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sallam and Allah um, in Isra wal Miraj. Okay, and let me ask you. Let me ask I did you. That okay. five times. Hold on, hold on. In the Isra al Miraj, was it a vision or it was a real journey? Mm -hmm. I see you're aware of the disputes within scholars regarding this. Scholars? Uh, some say it was a vision mm -hmm. and some say it was physical. I, I'm of the opinion that it was physical. Okay, so you are a person who is accusing Allah to be a liar because this is not okay. the scholar. This is not the scholar opinion. This is Quran, my friend. All right, hang on. So, with regards to your point, you know, about... you know, no, you do not know. Okay, which verse in the Quran saying this was a vision? Okay, no, but I found the verse. That my, friend, spoke about... I, my friend, my friend, I challenge you to tell me which verse. You, you never heard of this before, and don't play that you know. Just because Quran... I said to you, just because you know, just because I said to you. That the Quran says that a second ago you said to me the scholars they say that a second ago. Now but I said to you, to but this is not the scholars. Uh -huh. huh? Come on, be, be honest, be fair. Okay, Come on. okay. Okay. Quran to 17, verse 1. Exalted is he who took his servant by night from Masjid al Haram to Masjid al Aqsa, mm. whose surroundings we have blessed to show him our signs. Indeed, he is the hearing, the seeing. Okay. And Masjid al Aqsa is not in heaven. Yeah, but you never thought. <laughs> my friend come on focus on me, focus don't be nervous don't be nervous don't be nervous take, take it easy take it easy take it easy i say to you is it this is first of all the verse here proving that the story of muhammad is a big fat lie because nowhere it says i took you to heaven it says i took you to this from the second mosque into the farthest mosque where is the farthest mosque there's no mosque at that time there's no muslims there what mosque I Hold on. This verse okay, this what is the name of that mosque and where it's located? Can you tell me? In Al Aqsa in Jerusalem. Aqsa is just a farthest, is not a word, is not a name, it's just a mean far away, the far away mosque. Where? Come on, you're all aware that, that my friend Al -Aqsa. Al Aqsa in Arabic, you can ask any Arab guy the word Aqsa I mean the farther mosque, the most far mosque. Muslims, there was no Muslims around the world. What mosque? When the first mosque is built in Jerusalem, after you occupy Jerusalem, after you invade Jerusalem, and Umar al-Khattab, he took it over, and then you start building mosques. So what mosque Muhammad is talking about that he went during the night? Trying to, to say Masjid al-Aqsa was built by Umar al-Khattab. Is that what you're trying My to say? My friend, there's nothing It's called al-Aqsa. This is a lie. This is a lie. There's nothing It's called al-Aqsa. Oh. And long Let's after see. that, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan and other caliphate, they start destroying temples from Lebanon and other countries and taking rocks and build a mosque there in the top of a Jewish temple. There's nothing that's called Al-Aqsa. It's a lie. It's a big fat lie. Same time, my friend, as you see uh, here, where is in the verse it says that Allah, he took Muhammad to heaven. I asked you where in the Quran it says that Allah, he took Muhammad to the heaven. Can you show me the verse? I repeat that again. Okay, well, part of the verse tells you of the miraculous journey, right? It tells you about the journey in one so night. are you saying to me that the journey was not to heaven, was only to the mosque, which is in Jerusalem? 
No. Is as Muhammad So why Allah did not mention which one is more important, the journey to the house of Allah or journey for a mosque in Jerusalem? Well, Allah is not there to give you all of the answers. Then what's the point of having faith? My friend, what is the point of saying to me something is is part of the the journey, which is the most important part of it, is to go go all the way to Allah. Which one is more important? He mentioned to me that Allah He took him to the Father most, but He don't want to mention to me that He took him to heaven. It, come on, it's like getting something Jesus said. Okay, and then let, say, me said it, let me ask you. Again, let me ask you again. Let me ask you again. Let me ask you again. Was it a vision or it was a real journey? It was a real journey. Okay, is that a is that an opinion of Allah or opinion of the scholars? It's an opinion of it's the opinion of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the way he described it in the hadith. Mm. Okay, it's as he said. All right, here we go. So you are saying to me, anyone he says something different, he is wrong, right? Well, there's difference of opinion, isn't there? Don't, like, listen, see, don't play with the words. Either you say to me, anyone he believe that it was a vision, he's a liar, or you say to me, it is. He's not, it is he the could, truth. He's, mis he's mistaken. He's mistaken. Okay, I, yeah, I, I, I will take your words, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, take take uh, take this gentleman. He said that the one who believed that Muhammad did not go in real, it was a vision. He is mistaken. Okay, I like that. Well, we will find that in the same chapter in the same story. This is a chapter 17, verse number 60. It says that Allah He did a vision for Muhammad, not a journey, as real physical thing. Hmm? Let's have a look. <clears throat> It's nice to know you unblocked me though. I was expecting to be blocked when I called. Hey, my friend, I don't I don't block you unless you start calling names and start speaking over me. Don't let me talk. So now, does it say there that Allah He showed him a vision, not a true journey? We told thee that thy Lord doth encompass. Or you put something in the way? No, it's in the front of you. And when we said to you, surely your Lord encompasses men, and we did not make the vision which we showed you, but a trial for men and the cursed tree in the Quran as well. And we curse them to fear, but it only adds to their great mm. inordinacy. Mm. Is it a vision or it's not? Well, you're going to have to bring up the tafsir of that verse. No problem. Tafsir. My, 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 my friend, this is the same chapter that's in the front of you. This is about Al Isra. The, everything there is about Al Isra. Okay, in Al Isra, Allah He says that He Allah He saying to Muhammad, "We showed you a vision." What is the vision Muhammad He saw in 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 the story of Al Isra? Well, that He was taken up to the heavens from Masjid Al Aqsa. So it's a vision. It's not a. It's not a real journey. It's a fake journey. It's. A, I saw a vision yesterday. I saw like you know. I saw Trump. He is flying with the cat. And okay. he was singing a song. I mean, is it a real vision or this is a a, a dream? Sounds like a hallucination. But oh, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. So well, as, long, as long, my friend, as, as long, hold on, my friend, hold on, please. My friend, hold on. As long you mention uh, that somebody, somebody sound like is is a uh, he have an illusion. Did your prophet suffer from such a thing in his history? If we open the medical file of your prophet, did your prophet he suffer from? illusion yes or no you tell me well according to your pro according to Islam yes according to your religion that the Prophet even he imagined himself having sex but in fact he did not and this is Sahih al-Bukhari saying the Prophet continues for such and such at a period of time imagining that he had sex with his wives but in fact he did not so you said to me that this is sound like an illusion. Okay, Muhammad is suffering from illusion. It's been proven by Muslims themselves. They believe their prophet. He was under an illness, which is, they call it black magic or whatever they call it. But obviously he imagined things. Even his sex was not real. So how you can trust him? He is going to heaven. The Quran says a vision. The Quran says that he did not take him to heaven. The Quran says he took him to the father mosque. And Muslims now, they come with tons of his stories. And Muhammad, according to you, yes, Muhammad, he said, Allah, he took him to the seven heaven, but maybe this is a vision. Maybe it's a vision. 
you saying it is true but as you see your prophet he is not to be trustworthy because this guy he imagined things which is not true if I am a doctor or let us say you are a person applying for a job and I open your medical uh, file and I find that you've been infected with something we do not know what is that exactly that you can you know you you imagine things you hear voices even your prophet he says that stones they say to him assalamu alaikum is that correct it's true. yes okay trees they speak to him trees they speak to him they say to him assalamu alaikum trees they converted to islam so the mountains speak to him the, yeah, the stones speak to him the trees speak to him the speak the the, the, the trees they, they took shahada the goat spoke to him the camel spoke to him and the prophet here he imagined that he is having sex but in fact he did not that was one incident where there was black magic involved my friend that, what, that what what one incident what one incident what about the the that the two angels they come and they cut his chest is that a real story um there's a difference of opinion where, where that, that narration <laughs> could be fabricated where they moved are you talking about where they moved to the black spot on his heart my friend my friend does your prophet says that the one who control him it was a Jewish guy his name is Zuraiq uh, Lubaid ibn al-Asan from Bani Zuraiq he took some hair from your prophet and he controlled him from far like remote control and he made him imagining things yes or no well that's black magic yes okay. that did happen but with okay, remote no control so you are you most times believe that your prophet was under the control of voodoo well if it if it stated that it happened mm. it happened mm. well, what can i say okay so if it happened what i can say this is a good answer but isn't it your quran says that you have no authority over my good followers except the good ones um maybe yeah what do you mean maybe it's all we've no. done this argument okay we've we had this conversation so how muhammad how muhammad here is imagining things and this is from shaitan and muhammad in the quran allah he said to him that shaitan have no authority over the one who is good except the one who follow thee which means follow shaitan so in order for shaitan to control muhammad he have to be following thee which means following shaitan so the story you are talking about proving that muhammad he is following thee who is the yeah. shaitan that's the thing that people that do black magic now and affect good muslims that are believers they still affect them it, it doesn't mean that they're following the shaitan it's just something that allah laid down as a test to be used mm. by, by men of our time so is a black magic is is a black magic satanic or it is a godly thing it's satanic okay so here the verse saying that as long as satanic it's mean this is from the authority of shaitan so as long as satanic this is from the power of shaitan correct uh black what? magic what? is from the power of shaitan okay yeah. so but so as long as uh, it, it can only be um mm. it can only work if god will does it to work okay no that, that's not true the, the verse here is saying so allah by his authority he said that okay i will not let you control any of my good followers but i will let you control the bad ones so muhammad must be from the bad ones to be able to narrate control. the rest of the nation then huh? narrate the rest of the narration that angel jibrail came down Mm. and notified him of mm. where the magic was mm. and then they found the magic in the bottom of a well so they mm. could break the magic okay let me ask you a question about the story about the angel jibreel the angel jibreel he came and he did investigation and he found where the magic is where was where, where, where he found the magic in the bottom of a well okay the magic is a thrown in the bottom of a well how that can happen he literally when i say that i mean he took some hairs off his comb okay loose in it and through mm. the hairs in the bottom of the wall all right muhammad was uh, camping his beard like hijab and some hair come in his you know and somebody took it and he controlled somebody your prophet was controlled by some hair correct yeah with okay. black magic all right. well controlled is a right. strong word that's mean that anyone in the world now can control anyone anyone who knows the words to say he can take some hair from somebody and can control somebody by controlling his hair right 
controlling is here, okay. but it depends on the power of why that the guy, Why the guy he throw the hair, which is giving him the power of more Muhammad there? And why the angels, they have to do investigation if they are angels of God? Don't you know what people do? Where did you get, where did you get the word investigation from? Well, here we go. Uh, you see? Uh, read with me see, carefully. Okay, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Read with me the story. My friend, the story in front of us. There come to me two men. And what happened? Two men, they come to me. Who are they, those two men? One of them is Jibreel. Do you agree? Did you say that in the narration? I don't know. I you know. I'm asking you, who are they, those two men? They are two angels. And they my are... friend, I have not memorized narrations. I'm not a okay, no problem. Here we go. Your prophet saying, there come to me two men. One of them sat near my feet and the other near my head. And the one near my feet asked, the one near my head pointing at me. What's wrong with this man? Two angels, one of them he do not know. The other one is smarter, the other the other one play ignorant. Good cop, bad cop. The later hmm. replied, he is under the effect of magic. The first one asked, who had worked magic on him? The bad cop, he don't know. The other one replied, Lubaid ibn al-Asam. Okay, so now we know who is the one who did that to him. The first one asked, what material he did use? The other one replied, saying, "The skin of pollen from uh, from a, of a male made data tree, uh, with a camp in the hair stock, kept under a stone in the well of the Haron or the Haron." Then the scroll down. Okay. Why did you take it off? Huh? Scroll down on the narration. Okay. And then the prophet went to the well and said, "This is the same which the same well which they shown me." In the dream, was it was that a dream? Well, it sounds to me like he got wahi revelation from the angel to tell him where it was. Okay, so your prophet obviously he see things in his dream, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, after Muhammad, he saw that dream and he found what he claimed that the magic causing him to be bad. Was Muhammad better? Causing him to be bad. It doesn't say this. No, because it, it, he was under magic. He was controlled by magic. Is Muhammad now smarter, better? Well, that, that's a bit of a funny question, isn't it? Um, well, no. Okay, okay, now we found the reason. And the angels, they told him, where is the magic? Now, did Muhammad change? He became better, became healthy. Well, once they um, dismantled the magic, he was fine. Really? Yeah. How you know? Well, the, the effects of the magic were broken once they dismantled the magic. All right. Let us see if Muhammad was fine after the angels, they came to him. How you can prove to me that Muhammad became fine? This is a challenge. I will give it to you. Well, it's just according to our belief. If you find the magic and, and you break the magic, um, there's friend, various ways. You said you said he became yeah. fine. How you can show me that? I am a person who I learn from you nicely, kindly, please. Can you prove to me that Muhammad became fine after that? Well, I, I'm just going according to the normal rules of exorcism. Where, where, okay, where it says that he became fine? Can you show me? Just because something doesn't say that, it doesn't mean that it's not true. Okay, my friend very simple you said he became fine in order for you to begin to know he became fine that's mean you have some reference to show me because you were not there i was not there right so we would not we did not witness what happened so you you need to show me where you get this information from that your prophet became fine well i can give you the, the counter statement of where can you show me that he wasn't fine all, all over the whole quran is proving muhammad not to be fine Everything in the Quran is proving Muhammad to be not a person who have a, he obviously he is a person suffering from mental issues. Choose for, me, one, choose for me a chapter me, in the Quran. Me, choose for me a chapter right, in the Quran is not full of mental issues. issues. My friend, Look, I, when, I you're, when you're a prophet, he said that if, if the man have orgasm first, the baby will be like the father. If the women have orgasm first, the baby will be like the mother. Was he fine or he was suffering from mental illness? He was fine. So you'd be believing you as a Muslim that if a man have orgasm first, the baby will look like the father, and if the women have orgasm first, the baby will look like the mother. 
Well, this depending on scientific research, and I'm not a scientist, but it's I would take my Do you through. believe in that or not? Do you believe really, you as a person who have a very healthy brain and you are not under black magic, do you believe that if a woman have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy, a girl, and if the women, if the man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy? Do you believe in that? I, I will give you the same answer. If the prophet said it, I believe it, hmm. and I will not so, dare so disbelieve. So, so now, what we believe is simply that Muhammad, obviously, you said to me that he is not suffering from mental issues after that solution came in a dream of two angels. But as you see, Muhammad is still acting crazy and saying stupid things. Now you say to me you believe in stupid things that but that, that will not make it smart that will make you both of you stupid with my respect to you if you say so okay so I got what I want uh, thank you very much for calling me is that it? What, what about let's move on to something else I what, don't mind what you will go about what I mean that's it you know you just approved to me that you must believe in a stupid, my friend you just approved to me that you Muslims believe in whatever garbage Muhammad he says it doesn't matter if it's crazy stupid or not you believe in it can I how, how, can in, I the, how in the world do you believe that if women have orgasm first the baby will be like the, 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 the women Muslim women they can't even have orgasm because they do circumcision for them no that's not everyone what it's do you easy. mean that let me ask you let me ask you did the prophet yes. wives did the prophet wives have orgasm what kind of question is that? Obviously, why people not? Who are why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? What's wrong? Of What's course. wrong? Huh? Of course. What is the proof? I have a proof that it's not true. The wife of the prophet, when a woman, <laughs> a woman, a woman, one of the women who offered herself, and she is the auntie of Muhammad, she saw a wet dream. She was watching Playboy before she sleep, and then she have a dream, wet dream, and she have orgasm. She came to the prophet and she said to him. Should the woman who sees a wet dream wash her vagina? The prophet says, if she have a discharge, huh? The prophet said uh, before the prophet said, Ummu Salama, which is the wife of your prophet, said, huh, "Oh, messenger of Allah, <laughs> does th does that really happen?" Which means, does that woman have discharge? How she is his wife, but she never have orgasm. That's silly. I think you're making yourself look really stupid here because I, I don't get your point. Because end my of the point day, is the women she is saying the women she have with a dream and she have this charge. The women, the wife of the prophet said, <laughs> "How a woman she have this charge? This is cannot be true." Muhammad he said to her, "Yes, she have, huh? She have." And as you see, this hadith is a Sahih hadith. It's in Sahih al Bukhari. It is in Sahih Muslim. It's all over. So your point is, a woman did not know whether she has an orgasm or not. And my that friend, is so she never had one. A woman, she is asking, wondering. This is the wife of the Prophet. This is not a woman. A woman, she right. saw orgasm. She is not the wife of the Prophet. Hold on. A woman, she is. Not, wait. A woman, she is not the wife of the Prophet. She is asking if she sit with see what a dream touching her vagina having orgasm should she wash the wife of Muhammad she said because she said that a woman she have this charge does the woman does this happen Muhammad he said to her yes the man has this charge and the women have this charge when the man have this charge ie the sperm and he's explained to his wife the man this charge ie the sperm is thick and white and the women discharge is yellow and so the resemble comes from the ones uh, 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 you know the one who his uh, his his uh, uh, his comes come first so the wife of Muhammad she was wondering how this happened how she, Muhammad he did not explain yet what is after the first woman she just said that she have orgasm the wife of Muhammad she's saying how this can happen how you can have orgasm so well, she wasn't a scientist, and maybe she was just asking normally. Uh, who said that? My friend, we don't really. My, my friend, yes, she's intelligent... asking normally. Thank you very much. She's asking how a woman she can have orgasm. She's asking how this happened. How the women have orgasm? That means she never have orgasm. When a when a she wife you, when a wife she, she asks her husband, my friend, when a wife she asks her husband how a woman she can have this charge. That means she never have this charge. Well, she went to him asking about the discharge, so obviously she did have a discharge. So, no, the first woman is the one who have the charge, the women who have the wet dream. 
the wife of Muhammad she said after she heard her she said to her huh, what the women have this charge how this can happen <laughs> well I don't dwell into the sex drive uh, of the okay. thank you very much for coming thank you we give you a lot of time yeah right this is Muhammad after he became fine after Muhammad became fine he came with tons of verses in the Quran saying the most stupid things ever you can imagine dr. Muhammad is a specialist in sex and sexual dreams and this is a great example of what Islam is about you heard this gentleman and he was trying to defend his religion but he have nothing but poopoo Muhammad he says so believe it that's it even if it's so stupid so naive so garbage we believe it okay well we got our point here We got our point. Hello? Hello, Mr. Christian Prince. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Oh, it's good talking to you. All right. I'm one of your fans, and I and I, and I, I just I'm also a convert anyway. I converted to Christianity um for 18 years now when I gave my life to Christ. Right. I was also born and grew up a Muslim okay. until I found the Lord, yes. And I've been following you for quite some time. It's a really pleasure. I just call to say that you have my prayers and I've been praying for you. Thank you. Because you are, you are one in a million. I'm telling you, you are causing a serious havoc in the kingdom of darkness. In fact, talking to you right now, I don't even know what to say, you know. But the only thing I will want to say again to add up is to continue to encourage them as you go along with them. Telling that Jesus is the only option. Like the guy you just spoke to, that guy, I know in his mind, there is some doubt right now in his mind. I'm quite sure in his quiet moments, he will see that all the things that you are saying are really true. You know? Anyway, God bless you and God protect and keep you. Right. Thank you very much for what you are doing. All right, my friend. Thank you very much and God bless you. And we are happy for you that you left Islam and you became a Christian. The only thing I'm yes, not happy about, me. the only thing I'm not happy about, that is not me who made you leave Islam. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you know to be honest, I, I grew up in a Muslim family. Islam is what I know. I practice Islam to the tip. Hmm. I was born in West Africa in a country called Sierra Leone. That's where I grew up. Okay. I am now in the United Kingdom. And uh, my testimony is one of a kind because... At, at, at uh, when 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 I was like an imam in my family. Oh, you are an I, imam. I, I, you are you are yes, a leader of a mosque. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay, yes. my friend. I, I I want you to do me a favor. Yep. I'm not going to talk. I will give you five minutes to tell your testimony to the people here. Is that okay? Okay, that's All fine. Right. Guys, listen to this gentleman, please, everybody. This is a person who left Islam 18 years ago. Not not because of listening to Christian friends. No, he left 18 years ago. And he was from a religious family, and he himself he was like an imam for for the Muslims. So let us see what happened and how he became a Christian. Go ahead, my friend. I'm listening. I will not talk to you. I will not disturb you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, actually, my name is Saidu, and um, my second name is Abbasi. Saidu Abbasi. I was born and grew up a Muslim. I was born in an Islamic family, and uh, I studied the Quran. To some parts. In fact, I was the one who urged my dad to take me to the madrasa to join me to uh, the um, to join me to the Islamic school. And uh, my father was an Islamic scholar. He was responsible for the um, naming of babies and Islamic marriages. And then he became healed. And then during that period when he was so sick, I loved my father so much that. I prayed to Allah and I did all kind of things so that Allah will actually deliver my dad. But eventually my dad died. And immediately my dad died on the 1st of February 2001. In August, I started experiencing the same complaint. Actually, the old thing has to do with witchcraft. And so the same thing applies to me. I started experiencing all those bad things my dad was complaining, 
wherein no medical science was actually able or no doctors was actually able to diagnose. I began to experience the same thing. And then one of my sister was discussing this to a friend that my dad just died, our father just died. And then my younger brother again is going through the same stuff my dad went through. And then this lady then invite, told my dad, told my sister, if I can go to the church, I will get my healing. My sister said, I don't believe my brother will go to the church because and to the church because he is a we are Muslim and he loves Islam so much. So um, I my sister came to me and explained to me that these are the options and this is what the lady said. So I look at it and I said, Wow, how can I go to the church? Will this be possible? But as I was still suffering from this affliction and pain. I eventually decided to go to the church. When I go to the church, I receive my mega cool, I receive my healing. The affliction that actually killed my dad, right? I was delivered by Christ. And I was not only delivered, Christ revealed himself to me in many ways. For you people listening out there, you Muslim, you might think that I am I am not saying the truth. For you to believe that I was a Muslim, I'm going to recite some verses. So you will know indeed that, for example, I'm going to read um, Ayat al-Kursi, which is Allahu la ilaha ilahu wa ayyul kayyum. Sinatu wa lana un lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi arman jalla ji ashfawi indahu illa bihizmi wa allamu ma bayna haidihim. Wa ma kalafahu wa la yu ituna mi shayni mi hilmi hi illa bi ma shah wa siya kursi wa samawati wa ard. I'm just saying this because for over 18 years now, some of these things are passing away. I can't even remember them again because I've now been embedded in Christianity, right? So some of these um, verses, I are forgetting them, actually. But what I'm saying is that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Islam has nothing to offer humanity neither anyone who find themselves in that religion what christian priest is doing right is the right thing and god has called him for this day and for this age to the muslim world he is he, he is he is a professional in what he is doing so i want to encourage every muslim listening there right to consider their faith Muhammad is a false prophet. Allah is a false god. And Islam is nothing but a farce. There is a lot I would have said, but I don't want to go further than that. Anyway, this is all I have to say tonight. Thank you very much. I'm calling from the United Kingdom. Anyway. All right, my friend. Thank you very much for calling. And we are blessed with your call. And I hope that you will be able to bring more people out of Islam to the light of Christ. So they can Amen. enjoy eternity and love of the Lord. Thank you very much for the call. Amen. Thank you, Christian. Please, thank you. God bless. Thank you. Hello. All right. <clears throat> if you notice, the Muslims when they speak to us, they try to insult uh, a Muslim. He says to me, his name is Dan in the chat. He said, uh, "Christian Prince, did your grandmother have orgasm?" I mean, supposedly that is. I mean, how silly is that? Uh, and if she have an orgasm, is that bad? She's married to my grandfather. <laughs> Good job, my grandfather. <laughs> You're a prophet. He have tons of wives. Yet his God, who promised him a power of four thousand men in heaven, isn't it your God who promised every man to have the power of f wife one hundred in heaven? And your prophet, he bring promise the power of 40 men of people of heaven. That's mean he have the power of 4,000 men. Yet he cannot make his wife have orgasm. Well, if your prophet cannot use his private part, let him use something else, my friend. Your prophet was having sex with what exactly? Maybe he was doing it even in the wrong location. The Jews, they used to tell stories to make people not to do things wrong. As an example, 
the Jews they tell their children if you have sex with your wife from the wrong location your son your baby will be blind Muhammad he answered them scientist Muhammad he said your wives are the same as a ground dig in your ground whatever you wish which means don't worry about if in females in the wrong location go for it your wife are the same as a tilth you know when when the farmer he dig the floor the ground to put the seeds dig your tilth as you wish as you like do you see it any Abdul no the Muslim they try to say this is a position but the fact is not a position this is this is about location because the Jews this was an answer for the Jews who believe that if you have sex with the wife from the wrong location your child will become blind and this lie is they spread because they don't want men to practice that but it's a fiction anyway No screen? Oh, sorry. No screen. Go ahead. Here we go. You see it now? Chapter 2, verse number 223. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim want to call us? There is a there is a guy there is a story After the death of Uthman ibn Affan One of the companions of Uthman said if I know who is the one who killed Uthman, I'm going to F, excuse my language, I'm going to F him. A gay was listening and he said, I am the one who F, uh, sorry, I am the one who killed Uthman. So the companion, he made this man bow down, bow, uh, sorry, uh, bend over, and he started doing him. And the gay from underneath was saying, if I know that killing Uthman will bring such a punishment, I would love to kill Uthman every day. Any Muslim? Hmm? Actually, if you have my books, uh, Six and Allah, you will hear, you will see tons of stories, all of it documented from Islamic books, and Muslims cannot run away from it. You see, as I said from the beginning, Muslims they speak too much about dignity and honor and loyalty, and uh, you know we are against adultery, but everything in Islam is the opposite. Muta marriage, zawaj friend, one night stand. Lemam, lemam. You know what is a lemam? If we go right now in the Quran and we type the word lemam, lemam is you playing with the women, private part, hair, breast, or kissing her, uh, or touching her anywhere you wish until you have orgasm. And then this is not even considered as a sin 
this is something is like it's a, it's a it's not a big deal so what is the great shameful sin in islam if you have intercourse with the women not in a legal way not necessarily by marriage because you can have sex with your slave she's not your wife you can have sex with a woman she offer herself to you if you are a prophet like Muhammad you can have sex with watermelon you even can order a child slave to use her hand or his hand to play with your private part that is not even sin the story in the front of us chapter 53 verse number 32 it's about a guy who his name is Nabhanu Tamar. Nabhanu Tamar, he went to a woman. Hello? Are you there? Muhammad, are you there? Hello? If you don't talk, I will hang up on you. Hello. Okay, take yeah. care. Take a hike. The Bhanu Tamar, a woman, she came to him and she said to him, he said to her, Go inside the store. Inside the store, I have for you a lot of better fruits. Uh, Tamar in Arabic means the guy who sells palm date fruits. As simple as that. Hello? Hello? Okay. Are you there? Okay, a guy calling himself, he is calling himself Muhammad Hijab. Obviously, I don't think it is him playing games. Let me block you. There is no way the guy who live in England he will not have a good connection. Respect yourself. Don't play games. Anyway, if we go and see the story of Nabhanu Tamar, <clears throat> chapter fifty-three, verse number thirty-two. And again, thank you guys for those who they are making donation. We appreciate your support and your help. And I apologize if I don't mention your name when you do so, because I know that this is not really what you are seeking. All right? Okay, 32. <clears throat> Look what Muhammad he speak and he teach the Muslims. Muhammad he teach the Muslims that every human being he commit adultery because Allah he forced him to do adultery. Allah he wrote for you in your destiny to be an adulterist, and every one of us he have a special amount of adultery to do. It's not a choice; it is Allah decree. Allah decree for us, which means it is in our fate that we will do our portion of adultery and it's not a choice. And here we ask ourselves, how is stupid this man who says such a thing to say, I will punish you for adultery if this is what Allah he decree for us? Do you see it? I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid cult like this? If he is the one, Allah, he wrote my destiny, my partition of adultery, zina mean adultery, and a man, he cannot run away from it. Because this is written for you. 
So why you are going to punish me for what I did, which is the fault of Allah? This is why I asked the gentleman who called me, the guy who was defending Muhammad, do you think Muhammad, after he recovered from the bewitched black magic, he was better? He said, yes. I said, can you prove it? He cannot, because obviously he cannot be a person who have a brain to say such a thing. What is the wisdom of punishing me for a sin you write for me? The same as what happened to Adam. According to Islam, Adam was a victim of Allah. So if I commit sin, if I became an adulterist, that's what Allah wrote for me. So what is my fault? What is my fault? We should punish Allah. Not the one who commit adultery. The one who is playing games with us is Allah. He is a scumbag. He make me commit adultery and then he punish me for what he made me do. Have you ever heard of a stupid cult like this before? So what is what is the penalty of hell and heaven and sin for if you are the one who made me do sin? That's stupid. That's madness. Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. I've been with you for many hours. It's our time for me to take my start working my books. I have many books to finish and there's two books we are I'm trying to prepare them to be published so I want to say thank you for being here and I hope today we did share good information and knowledge with all of you feel free to download my videos share them as you wish with your family your friends they are made for you for free the Lord he said for free you took for free you give and our videos are for free so we spend our time we spend our day and almost every day with you for many many hours so you will not be misleaded and your child will not go to school and some people fool him and making convert to islam our ignorance is our problem people die because of their ignorance the bible says my nation perished because of their ignorance fight ignorance my friend that is our enemy my enemy is not the muslims my enemy is ignorance ignorance the ignorance of the Muslims the ignorance of the Christians my ignorance and your ignorance this is the enemy let us fight it together and I wish you all the best of Christmas and remember Christmas is not a date Christmas is to be with the Christ and to be with the Christ to be Christ like be good as your father and you know the rest so don't debate about christmas day debate about if we can make every day a christmas day every day should be christmas for a christ should be in our life in our day in our night and then you will find that your life is successful if you put a christ in your family then you will treat your wife as a Christ taught you. You will not cheat. You will share love, not anger and violence. Same as for the female. If she put a Christ in her family, she will not cheat. She will be decent. She will be loyal. And she will defend her family until the last second in her life. Christ, my friend, is our protection. Nothing else. Don't let him go out of your life, and then you will be sorry. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you, and Merry Christmas, everybody. See you soon again. Bye-bye.